group too that's you know, relatively very affordable um that i do like i literally just came off of that it's on tuesday nights at 7 p.m um eastern and it's usually 90 minutes but you know i do amas which is again ask me anything and there's tons of people and they're asking me questions so um if there's something that i don't cover or i don't answer the question in a way that you guys want just feel free to reach out to me okay i want to know how you send, send out two three emails every day that are detailed <laughs> have so much information in it and then there's tiktok videos and youtube videos it's, un it's unbelievable <laughs> I mean, look, man, before I became this, uh, what I call myself an online gypsy, people ask me like, what do you do? You know, my daughters are like, oh, my dad's an online gypsy. Um, I was in my quote unquote wage slave life. I was an internet marketer. I worked in uh, the digital automotive space, um, you know, making money for other people. I worked for Kelly Blue Book. I worked for Edmonds and I worked for Auto Trader and I was like advancing to the highest level. So I really learned how to market online way before most people understood it. Uh, and then when I became an entrepreneur, you know, I just took what I learned and obviously became really good at into that space. But as you said, Bill, um, it's a, you have to have, you're, you're only as good as the people with you. You know what I mean? And I have like two copywriters that write all my emails and they're absolutely amazing. And I've hand trained them since 2016. So then they know my voice, they know my audience and um, they write like me. You know, I always get final editorial say, but there's some days I don't get to it, man. I'm doing so much stuff. So it's kind of like, oh God, I hope they don't make any, they don't say anything crazy, but I appreciate what you said. And they're, you know, they're, they do write some amazing emails. There's no doubt. So at some point, maybe you'll tell us how you went from Kelly Blue Book to peptides. That's a, that's a big leap. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, I mean, you know, for you guys that don't know my backstory, um, you know, I kind of got into this space uh, writing the first really scientifically accredited book on how to use therapeutic testosterone. And, you know, without getting into a long story, because I want to do the peptides uh, presentation here in a second, um, you know, I was just blessed that I was a ex college and pro basketball player. I got kicked in the testicles at 29 playing in an adult men's league. And it literally created some form of like type two hypogonadism, you know, environmental. And I literally was referred through my PPO doctor at the time. Cause I was literally working in the automotive digital automotive space as a 29 year old guy, almost turning 30 to an endocrinologist. And he read my labs and he saw that I had like 180, you know, total testosterone and like a negligible free testosterone level. And he said, I can put you on therapeutic testosterone and have you ride as rain. You know, fast forward that story uh, after being on for 12 weeks, my life like transformed, you know, all the dopamine and all the amazing feelings of it. And I was, you know, still only 30 year old guy. He wanted to take me off and I'm like, you're not taking me off of this. Like, so then like the next 10 years of my life, I just became this student. You know, I had a molecular biolo biology minor in college. So I was always kind of a science dork. Um, but I just went deep, deep, deep with it. And in the same time that I was experimenting with therapeutic testosterone, I was also lucky enough to meet people that pushed me on to ipamorelin. And so like I tell people like in 2004, I started to use ipamorelin through a company in Texas called Southern Research Company, which was really the back office of a compound pharmacy, which some of you guys might know who is, I won't mention their name, but like they were selling, you know, out of the back office, Ipamorelin to people who had access to it. So that's when I started using peptides. Um, and, you know, this was just like what I did in my free time when I wasn't, you know, a white collared sales guy during the day, you know? And so I just like really learned all this stuff and had essentially a mastery of it. And so eventually one of my friends was like, dude, you got to write books on this or write a book on the hormone stuff. And then that led me to meet guys like you and start going to the medical conferences. And, you know, subsequently now this will be, so the book that's coming out, which you guys are all going to want to read. Uh, and I'm probably a, less than a month away from sending it is definitely going to be my masterpiece book. It's called 30 days to shreds. And it sounds like a bro science book, but it's actually a very deep scientific dive uh, into using GLP one agonists and all the other various, you know, growth hormone agonists of peptides to lose the most amount of body fat possible in 30 days or less, but doing it in the context of health and longevity. So it's a very powerful book. I mean, I've been editing it for the last two weeks now, and I can't wait to release it to the world. It's definitely going to be a book that's going to help a lot of people because, as you guys know, 80% of people are metabolically dysregulated, I think, out there in America today because of our environment contamination. But with all that said, gents, are you guys ready? We're ready. All right. Let me just find the actual lecture. I should have had that pulled up. Let's see here. All right. There we go. Got it. 
All righty, here we go. All righty, okay, let me share a screen here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let's see, do I have the ability? You got me, you gave it to me. My, um, so what do I need to do to share this? Let me see, I, I think green, I got it. Green thing there. The, the, the yeah, bottom. I think I got it. Yep, I'm good now, okay. All right, you guys see that? Yep, there we go, we got it. Okay, so again, I'm gonna rip through this. Um, this presentation is about two weeks old and I kind of updated it for you guys. So everything you desire to know about peptides, what are peptides? Again, you guys are, most of you guys know this stuff better than say, you know, an average lay crowd. So I'm not going to go deep into the science, but again, biological compounds, two or more aminos produced, you know, biologically de decreases with age, exposure to diets, environmental stressors. Uh, they have the body's, uh, you know, therapeutic healing ability to fundamentally address the root cause of an issue. Um, again, that's just a picture, the importance of regenerative healing. Um, obviously when we add peptides to a regimen, it totally can enable the body to heal on a cellular level. Um, you know, apologize for my team throwing in pictures of me. Uh, I am 52 years old and I do pretty much look like this year round. And I totally do give credit to, uh, you know, using therapeutic peptides and being hormonally optimized and of course living insulin controlled, but you know, this is, you know, as I always say, I learned at an early age, you want to practice what you preach, right? So obviously I do, but uh, again, physiological changes, faster healing. I think most people that are familiar, you know, at a cursory rate level of peptides know that they dramatically speed the rate of healing. I mean, really it's like Wolverine, you know, from the X-Men, if you understand how to use the various uh, healing modality peptides, which we'll get into in a second. Um, so again, hundred years, very few people know that. Um, initially overshadowed again, because they were basically small molecules and now they are starting to gain recognition. Uh, at, towards the end of this, I'll talk to you guys about my, you know, my theories on like where this is going. I mean, I mean, I might as well tell you guys again, because most of you guys are physicians. I mean, I see unfortunately an environment where eventually all of peptides are going to be FDA controlled and compounded. There will not be any off label use like now where you guys can all go to like various compound pharmacies the good news is most of you guys are smart enough to know that like you know you're you're going to seek out alternative forms of sales you know whether that's like on the research side uh or you know find a compounder that doesn't really care and will continue to sell to them but like i've you know been told by people i would say at a very high level that it's not lasting much longer that uh big pharma wants its pound of flesh um again numerous conditions, bone strength, joint support, injections, oral formulations, naturally produced or synthetically created, um, not instant cures, the state of health influences the effect, be aware of the placebo effect. I always tell people this, I literally just had this conversation with my call with my private group. If a person is not hormonally optimized, and they start on peptides, and they're seeking fat loss or better muscle gain or retention, or just, you know, improved well-being and all that stuff, they're not going to get the same effect as a hormonally optimized person. And I think as teachers and educators, and obviously, you know, frontline users of these products, we have to educate the people that we speak to on a regular basis that like, if the pillar is the physical body, then you first have to dial in the physical body from a lifestyle standpoint before you consider adjuvants like peptides, like growth hormone, whatever. And again, obviously hormonal optimization is kind of round one of that. Um, so this is the top 10 mistakes. And by the way, for any of you guys that want this, I have a PDF of this, which I'll be happy to send you. Um, again, conduct your own research. You know, most people who start peptides do not have enough of awareness. I mean, I think you guys know um, peptides are not easy. You know, when my business partner and I created our first peptide course two years ago, after about four months of selling it into the open market and having tons of physicians and, you know, PAs and NPs buy it, you know, we started to realize that like, you have to have an IQ of about 105 to 110 <laughs> to actually use therapeutic peptides without confusing yourself. Cause I mean, again, it's not, you know, it's not rocket scientists, but at the same time, there's definitely a little bit of legwork and research. So anyway, mistake number one is buying from a non-reputable research chemical company. Um, for you guys that know me, I am 
uh, essentially the master affiliate and, uh, you know, spokesperson, whatever you want to call it, affiliate marketer for Limitless Life Nootropics. Now, Limitless is a research chemical company, but as William knows, they are the only compounding, they're not a compounder, obviously, they're a research chemical company, but in between compounders and research chemical companies, they are the only one that I know of that actually does third-party testing and offers certificates of authenticity on all of their peptides. You are not going to see peptide sciences do that. You are not going to see any other research chemical company. And again, I will argue till I'm blue in the face, show me a compounder that does that. Okay. And again, the compounders are supposedly FDA approved and medically regulated and sterility and process controlled. But I mean, who's verifying that, right? So that's why I obviously promote for Limitless. Uh, you know, I am very close to their owner. I'm very close to their uh, the company that they get their raw materials from. And I can assure you guys that if you buy from Limitless, I know it's a research chemical company. It's not FDA approved, blah, 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 but it's as good as any FDA approved uh, research chemical company out there. There's no risk in buying from them. But, you know, to say that and go the opposite, I can definitely tell you guys that a lot of the research chemical companies that you see on Facebook or Google or any other ad are literally being brewed in people's kitchens and basements. So buyer beware. Um, purchasing, purchasing peptides without also purchasing bacterial static water. Again, if you're getting these from a compounder, these are not issues. But for a lot of people, they are going the research chemical route. They purchase from the research chemical companies. Again, the two biggest ones now are clearly Limitless and Peptide Sciences. And what you have to understand is, is that the research chemical companies are not allowed legally to offer medical advice. So if you buy from them and then you email their customer service team or even call them and you ask a medically related question around dosing or around uh, reconstitution or conversion or any of that stuff, they can't even answer you. Like they are literally in trouble by answering. So it's, you know, it creates a, in the marketplace, it creates confusion and it's unfortunate, but, you know, as I tell people at some point, it literally may be the only way to get peptides. And I would actually say that if you put a gun to my head right now, I would tell you that is coming very soon. Uh, mistake three, purchasing peptides without also acquiring insulin syringes. Again, if you're buying from a compounder, these are usually provided together. But if you're buying from research, they're not. So obviously always know that. Uh, not understanding how to reconstitute. That's like the number one issue that both even docs, you know, uh, but you know, patients, consumers and doctors have of like the question they always ask me is like, bro, I understand how to do this. And I know what the dosage is between micrograms and milligrams, but I just don't know how much water to put into the vial. So, you know, on my website on jcampbell.com, I do have a peptide calculator that's, you know, designed by a high level developer. And it, you know, it really does give you the idea or the options from based on the size of your vial, whether it's two, five, 10, 20 milligrams, or even if you want to do a custom version, how much to, by, you know, choosing one CC, two CC, three CCs of bacterial static water, um, you know, then what is the conversion between milligram and micrograms? But, you know, truthfully to all of you guys and gals, this is confusing. So it's, it's, you know, you definitely, if you can, you want to use a peptide calculator whenever it's possible to do these kind of conversions. Uh, mistake number five, starting peptides without understanding proper injection procedure. I mean, that's pretty much understood here in the medical community, but a lot of people do not understand, you know, they think, oh my God, I have to do a, you know, a, a, a what you call it, an IV push, or I have to inject into a vein or something. It's like, no, dude, you're injecting in your, uh, you know, belly fat, you know, adipose, you're doing a subcutaneous injection. But again, a lot of people don't know this. Um, again, dosing in the difference between milligram and microgram, that's where the peptide uh, calculator comes in. Not understanding the role of nutrition and exercise and attaining results. I've already kind of said that, like, again, if you don't have your lifestyle factors dialed in and you start these things thinking they're magic bullets, you're not going to get the results. Uh, again, having unrealistic expectations. This is truthfully like 80% of the public now. You know, uh, my book was released in February and it instantly went to number one on Amazon in like 13 different categories in like eight countries. And it was just like this insane, you know, upsurge of people interested in peptides. And then you start conversing with them or talking to them and they have all unrealistic expectations. And look, I'll say this, this is my personal opinion. I hopefully it doesn't offend any of you guys. My opinion of why peptides is in the mass consciousness right now is because so many people have been harmed by the V that they're looking for alternative forms of healing. And so, you know, peptides is at the top of the ladder. 
So a lot of people are looking at peptides right now as like, oh my God, you know, I need to feel better. I need to quote unquote heal from whatever kind of autoimmune dysregulation I have from the V or whatever my, my, you know, perception is from the V. And so this is why this is like so big right now. And again, I've gotten crazy emails from physicians all over the world asking me for protocols to, you know, restore this or to help with that, you know, when it comes to the V and I have to be very cautious and careful. As many of you guys know, you can't say anything against it. If I posted an actual article on Jay Campbell and I, my website has massive traffic, but if I posted an article on what to do to quote unquote, rebuild your autoimmune system from gene therapy, they would literally delete my website. That's how insane it is. So you just have to be really cautious when you like give advice when it comes to like preparing or working around that. Uh, again, I already told you guys not being hormonally optimized. This is probably number one for a 45 year old male or female patient. Um, again, if they're, if, if you ask them, Hey, what about your hormones? Do you know if you're working with a hormone deficiency and they say, I have no idea. Why does that matter? Then you, 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 you got work to do with them because again, they're not going to get the same effects as somebody who is hormonally optimized and look without getting into the science. I think most of you know there's a synergy between growth hormone agonists and you know the anabolic signaling of therapeutic testosterone or estradiol or progesterone. There's you know a lot of great synergy between those two. So if both systems, you know, uh, pituitary and endocrine are optimized, you're going to get a better effect than not. Uh, and then the last one is again the difference between various peptide delivery systems. So I got to say this to you guys because you guys will laugh at this. Um, in 2019, when I was at, it was, might've been 18, it was 18 or 19. It was at a for M and I was at the tailor made booth. And of course, a lot of you guys know the history of tailor made and you know, what happened with them and all that. But, you know, I saw all these doctors coming up to their booth and, you know, and I was actually, or my wife was actually passed. She was doing a book signing at their booth at that point in time. And, um, uh, I just saw all these doctors just flocking to the booth with like the most insane questions about peptides. It was at that point that I realized that doctors had such low awareness of this. Again, there was no, no, no credibility in the marketplace other than like, you know, bro science stuff. It was mind blowing as my business partner, you know, and my business partner, Nick Andrews is 22 years in the biopharma space. You know, he did audits for compound pharmacies and, you know, he's a genius uh, biochemical formulator. That's what he is. He's a biochemical engineer by trade, but we were just watching this stuff and we were laughing because we were like, imagine the marketplace for peptides because the pharmaceutical reps would literally sell doctors on formulations of peptides that had zero efficacy. And what I mean by that is like, there are literally people out there right now still writing scripts for you know, trochies or lozenges, oral lozenges or whatever of peptides that have absolutely zero ability to cross, you know, based on salivary enzymes and also, you know, the gut, um, they, the, the peptide is degraded. There's no efficacy. You know, I mean, there's almost no oral peptides that are efficacious. You know, they sell seed cells, BPC capsules that have not enough BPC in them to really do anything outside of like maybe help the microbiome a little bit, but they're not doing much to help like soft tissue injuries and stuff like that. So it's mind blowing to see how much disinformation is out there in the pharmaceutical world of them selling delivery systems that are absolutely useless. And so I'll wrap all that up by saying always and twice on Sunday, injectable peptides is the highest impact delivery system. Let's see here. Uh, the best peptides for fat loss. Okay, so I'm gonna just going to go through this fast. I know, Bill, you told me I have 60 minutes to maybe a little bit longer, but again, I want to be uh, you know, wary of your guys' time and also save room for questions. So um, most people today that buy peptides are, again, looking for fat loss, right? Again, 80% of adults uh, in North America. This is a very recent statistic, by the way. Canada and the USA... 80% of men and women over the age of 40 in Canada and the USA are by the BMI obese. Now, again, I know BMA is, BMI is not the ultimate predictor anymore. And, you know, people that are really hyper muscular or very low body weight, you know, are really thrown out. But I mean, that's insane number. So obviously, the majority of people are obviously looking for fat loss. So these are really the top peptides. When I say top peptides, let's be, I want to be honest with all of you guys and just transparent. There are hundreds of other peptides that are out there that would provide efficacy for a lot of these uh, modality, treatment modalities that we'll be talking about tonight, but they're not available, right? So I'm not going to cover them. Um, I do think at some point they will become more available. And again, I think it's all going to research because I think eventually the FDA, big pharma and, you know, 
whatever things that those alphabet agencies do are going to collude to basically say you either buy, you know, FDA approved, you know, frontline uh, cost products, or you don't get access to them as a physician. And if you attempt to, you know, quote unquote, sell, you know, non FDA approved peptides, we're going to come after you. I mean, I, I can see that. So anyway, Ipamorelin, this is the peptide that I started using in 2004. It's insane to think that I've been using peptides for 19 years. Um, and then this peptide is an absolutely profound peptide in that it doesn't disturb endogenous growth hormone release, right? So again, depending on your age, uh, and this is also something that a lot of medicine gets lost on this because the older you are, based on how much IGF-1 levels you're naturally producing, the less efficacious an actual peptide is going to be to you. And again, there's outliers. But, you know, when it comes down to being like, if you're 50 to 60 years old, um, is growth hormone going to be better than peptides? Again, from a, from a growth hormone agonist releasing peptide, absolutely it's going to be. Because if you take a IGF-1 level test, and I realize there are other factors other than IGF-1, but if you see your IGF-1 levels as low as it is, then you realize, you have to realize, even though very few people talk about this, that a peptide is not going to stimulate much of nothing right? Because that's what these do, right? They're exogenous agents to stimulate your body's natural production. But if you don't really have the bio you know, parameters or bioenergetics to stimulate natural production, you're not going to get the same result. So I always say, if you're 50 plus, get an IGF-1 level test first, find out what you're working with. And if you don't have any, you know, go growth hormone over any of these other things, because you're going to get a better result. And I've written an article about this it's on my website. You know, I'm happy to send it to you guys if you have a question on it. There is so much bullshit out there about growth hormone shutting down the pituitary that's not true. Uh, I have measured this in myself uh, in detailed uh, times when I've been on and off uh, both. And there is very, I mean, I don't even think that you would ever disturb your body's pituitary from actually using exogenous growth hormone unless you are using insanely high you know, bodybuilding, super physiologic dosages. And even in that standpoint, there are studies out there that show that those people do not disturb um, their pituitary function permanently. It comes back, it resets. You know, uh, a good friend of mine, a very famous uh, brain surgeon, you know, once told me back in 2014, he was like, dude, if everyone was given growth hormones starting at 35, there wouldn't even be hospitals in the United States. Right. So, I mean, like if we were using growth hormone in clinically precise dosages, you know, for everybody, and again, relevant to their lifestyles being dialed in, you know, living insulin controlled, you know, doing exercise with weights and cardiovascular and obviously getting enough sleep, growth hormone is an amazing adjuvant. But again, to talk about peptides and swing back, you know, ipamorelin is definitely the best growth hormone agonist peptide. It's, it's neck and neck with tessamorelin, but like in large with men and women. This is the best one. I find ipamorelin in women works better than anything else. I know you guys are familiar with using it in combination with CJC, you know, 1295 DAC or without DAC. But in my experience and also my professional opinion, um, I don't like CJC and ipamorelin together because I feel like it produces too strong of a growth hormone agonist release. A lot of people feel uh, you know, the flushing, the niacin type flushing that CJC creates. And I also feel like it's such a strong growth hormone pulse um, that it just turns people off. A lot of people don't feel well on it, but it's very strong, again, growth hormone agonist to use them in combination. But I like ipamorelin by itself because it doesn't increase prolactin. It doesn't increase cortisol. It doesn't cause hunger. Uh, and it's very, very mild as form of side effects. I mean, I don't know any side effects from people that use ipamorelin unless they take too much of it. You can take this also because it doesn't disturb the pituitary. You can take it two or three times a day if you're, you know, anal retentive enough to do it. Um, so anyway, great peptide. There's the dosage, 200 to 300 micrograms. Again, you can take it up to three times a day. Uh, so I'll, I'll get to some point in this lecture talking about why we cycle peptides with antibody buildup. Again, a lot of people don't talk about that, but most peptides, especially ag growth hormone agonists or growth hormone releasing peptides, you don't want to go eight longer than eight to 10 weeks because your body does have an antibody buildup effect. And once that happens, the, the, uh, the side effects go up, you start having increased water retention. Um, and you also just don't get the same fat burning or you don't get the, the same restorative deep sleep that you get initially. So again, I like cycling the GH 
you know, agonist releasing peptides by eight weeks at most, you know, you can probably go 10, um, but that's kind of the way I do it. Um, so tesofensine is not technically a peptide. It's a small molecule, um, but this is a very profound, um, it's a BDNF stimulator. I mean, this was originally, you know, a, a failed or orphan drug for uh, depression. It's not an SSRI, but it obviously clinically works in similar fashions. But uh, one of the effects that they saw in the patient population groups before they abandoned it was dramatic weight loss. Uh, but also like people just have a, a, for any of you guys who are experienced use it, I'm sure some people in the audience have used it. You feel the BDNF stimulation, which is obviously brain derived neurotropic factor. When I used it and I, and, and, you know, true, tr a true story. I've only been using tesofensine since mid 2021. So it's been about two years now, but like, this is my favorite peptide. When people ask me now, like, what is your favorite nootropic peptide? I say, well, that's kind of a trick question for me now, because like I consider tesofensine a nootropic because of what it does to BDNF. You know, Bill, you asked me like, how do you put out three emails a day? I used 500 micrograms of tesofensine because it's just, it's, it's, it's truly a profound, like I said, it just, it puts you in a flow state from day one using it. Like you really feel better. Now there are people that use this and literally can't sleep at night. And, you know, my pet theory is that they are people that were previous SSRI users and they have, you know, synaptic dopamine, dopaminergic, dopaminergic and serotonergic issues from the SSRIs that they were on long-term. And then they went off of them cold Turkey. And I think that tesofensine reactivates some of those, uh, you know, reuptake pathways and it makes them not sleep well. But even those people, and again, I've talked to many of these people, uh, and I see this in women more than I see this in men, um, when they lower the dose from 500 micrograms to 250, it totally goes away. So there's something about the 500 level that stimulates them or overstimulates them, and they can't sleep well at night, but they still feel amazing on it. Like, all of these comments to me are like, dude, I'm literally laying in my bed at night, staring at the ceiling, thinking about what I got to do. You know, so I'm like, well, is that a bad thing? And they're like, yes, I can't sleep. Right. So, I mean, like once they lowered the dosage from 500 to 250, um, most of those problems went away. But I mean, again, this is just, I, I don't know very many people that complain of this. The other thing in the clinical research with this is that you can cold turkey this product. Uh, you could be on it for six months at 500 micrograms and decide that you're going to turn, you stop taking it. There's no uh, receptor attenuation and there is a not, there's no addictive, uh, you know, qualities about it. It's not something that you become reliant on. And I've tested this myself. You know, I'll go six to eight months on this completely and then go off of it for four months and not once. And I've done that twice now in the two years I started using this and not once have I ever thought like I needed it or did I feel like I needed to go back on it. So again, I obviously have love and affection for this product. Uh, again, it's 0.5 or 0.25 first thing in the morning when you wake up. And I haven't met a person who started it who didn't feel profound effect again. And that's the BDNF enhancement within the first 48 hours of using it. Now, I didn't say this, and obviously this is why it's you know considered a fat loss uh, product or an obesity reduction uh, product is it is a metabolic uncoupler. But the metabolic uncoupling effect is not seen until usually three to four months in, in almost everyone. When, when my wife and I started using this, we never saw any, um, you know, fat loss, quote unquote. I mean, obviously we're very highly optimized people and pretty lean, but we never really saw anything. And then all of a sudden, like magic, four or five months in, we both got leaner and we're like, what the hell's going on? Because it was actually at the time we started taking it, we had started taking it in late fall. And it was like in the winter, which is when like when we eat, you know, the most unrestrained and we both got leaner and we're like, what's going on? And then I was like, oh my God, it's a test of fencing. So there definitely is a uh, lip lipolytic effect of tesofensine, but you see it later. The only other thing I will say about this, and again, this is in the clinical research, it also does suppress appetite. It's not nearly as strong as the GLPs uh, in doing that, but there is an appetite reduction. And this also it goes really well with the GLPs because of the VNF stimulation. So obviously if you're somebody that fasts, does a fasting mimicking diet, is a keto dieter, whatever, you know, even a carnivore, um, there's a lot of benefit in this because it allows you to extend your fast without feeling hunger pangs. Um, okay. So Tessa, 
I think, again, a lot of you guys know Tessa. So this is an FDA-approved, clinically available drug for mostly HIV patients who have a form of uh, you know, visceral body fat deposition in their center mass. Like, you know, it's a, like, basically it's called, um, what is it? Lipodystrophy. And they get like really hard visceral body fat in the center mass, like right down around the, the abs. And this is like known from the drugs that they take in HIV and wasting. And so this drug was developed as, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, a, 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 an, an agonist towards tearing up that body fat. So, it's called the uh, FDA approved version is called a Grifta and it's outrageously expensive. They charge like to have a prescription of this for a month is like $4,400, which is obviously completely outside of the affordability of the average uh, North American consumer. So obviously the research chemical companies sell it for a lot cheaper, but if you are a man or really even a woman, but obviously most men have more body fat storage in their center mass or, or their belly this thing will tear through belly fat like a hot knife through butter. Again, assuming all things are equal, you're dialed in, you have, uh, you know, you're living insulin controlled. The problem with Tessa Morellin is, and again, this is my opinion, my professional experience in using it, is it also stops working fast. So you, you got about six weeks with this to truly see maximum impact. Um, so I always tell people like, if you have belly fat and that's where most of your fat is stored, this is the peptide for you. I still prefer, uh, Ipamorelin over Tessamorelin. The other problem with Tessamorelin is it's very difficult to get, uh, there's, you know, I know limitless right now is, you know, just starting to actually produce it. If you're in their peptide buyers club, um, peptide sciences is always have it now technically, because again, it's a clinically approved FDA approved peptide. Nobody should be selling it, but again, they're not really going after the research chemical companies. And a lot of these guys are adulterating the product. They put in like, you know, amidate or uh, hyaluronic acid or, you know, something else to basically, you know, adulterate the product. So it's not a patented product. And that's how they're getting around doing it. I know that's what Limitless does. I don't know if Peptide Sciences does that, but again, it's a pretty strong product. Um, you know, you're going to take, there is, you know, science that shows that it also lowers triglyceride levels, which obviously would be great. Uh, and, you know, in older people improves cognition and, and, and enhances muscle gain. I will say this, this is just kind of like a bonus statement, like the two best peptides used in conjunction with each other or concomitantly or to, to build muscle is Tessa and IPA. Um, and I've, you, you know, personally used that tw two or three times in my life. And it definitely allows you to improve strength. Uh, it increases, um, you know, glycogen repletion or restoration, you know, much more than like one of them or you or them each used in isolation. So a combination of them is like amazing for building muscle. So if you have a wasting patient uh, or an elderly patient, you know, with frail bones or just an inability to put on size or mass, like that's what you want to give them is Tessa and Ipa together. I will say the one thing to be cautious of though is because it's so profound in its effect is that you will have very significant water retention, which is obviously, you know, very noticeable because it's increasing glycogen, uh, you know, in the cells. So, you know, that's one thing to know about, but that's definitely by far the best combination for muscle gain. But again, Tessa is one milligram AM and one milligram PM, uh, in PM AM, PM injected. And again, six weeks before you start getting down regulation. Um, AOD 9604. So this is one of those peptides where in theory, the research shows it's amazing, but in actual practice, eh, you don't get the same effect at the beginning of semaglutides making the rounds is like the big GLP one agonist that everybody was prescribing for appetite suppression. And of course, for type two diabetics uh, to improve insulin sensitivity, this was the peptide that they were scripting in combination. And so, of course, I use this in combination before I'll get to terzapatide in a second before I started using that with SEMA. You know, I never got the fat loss that everybody raves about with this product. Maybe some of you guys have seen it. You know, I have heard and experienced from some people that I work with or have spoken to that they do see fat loss from it. For some reason, all AOD 9604 did for me was create water retention. You know, and I experimented with a pretty high dosage of this. So again, I'm not downplaying this. You know, if you get decent results from it, you know, stick with it. Um, that's what I use. I actually even went up to 600 micrograms twice a day when I was deep into the semaglutide, you know, being a lab rat. And I just, I never saw the same effect that I would see with other uh, growth hormone agonist peptides. So jumping into SEMA. So, so this was the first GLP-1 agonist, you know, that really started to make headway in the big pharma world. And, you know, obviously now you've got people that have been using sem semaglutide for two years. 
Uh, it is obviously FDA approved. It's not as strong as terzapatide, which is a GI, GIP and a GLP-1 agonist. So this is a single agonist. Terzapatide is a double agonist. Literally in four days, I'm sorry, five days. So it comes out on Monday. The results of the trial for Reta Trutide, which is the first triple agonist GLP uh, peptide is coming out. Now, I can tell you guys this, if they approve it, and so far indications are they're going to. Um, I've been following the trials for, it's been in trials for four years. It will literally be the first peptide that attacks body fat or body composition modulation from all three known levels, which is obviously uh, enhancing, enhancing, enhancing thermogenesis, uh, improving metab met, uh, basal metabolic rate, and then also increasing brown adipose tissue formation in the upper back or lower back. So essentially you're tackling fat loss or lipolysis through all three known pathways. So essentially it will be the magic injection to reduce body composition um, better than anything else. So again, we all kind of have to say a prayer or keep our fingers crossed that they actually grant that product um, you know, clinical license and application so that the world can get it, it will dramatically improve over what people are experiencing with terzapatide, which I'm going to get to in a second. I write about terzapatide deeply in the new book that's coming, which, you know, is going to help a lot of people. So anyway, my, my feedback on semaglutide is it's okay. Um, there are more side effects with this product than there are with terzapatide. Um, the bottom line with all GLP-1 agonists that I think is important, and you guys as clinicians, you know, really need to stress this with your patients is they're not magic bullets. There's way too many people who think that they can take these products and still eat like shit and not control their insulin. And they're the ones that get the side effects. They're the ones that have the gallbladder problems. They're the ones that have, you know, uh, increased resting heart rate. I mean, all these bullshit side effects that you see people report that doctors like, uh, you know, Dr. Peter Atia and others, I won't mention names, you know, glamorize on, you know, there's also the muscle loss and the wasting from these things. This is all complete fear porn designed to, you know, again, create issues where there really isn't and the issues and again i'll just say this i was going to save this for tizapatide but since i'm talking about it now i'll just cover it right now if you don't teach the patient how to properly lose body fat when they're on a glp and a proper you know instructions on how to do that is it, it, to do this is obviously again change lifestyle lower insulin control for carbohydrate consumption uh you know you have to eat enough protein. Again, one gram of protein per pound of lean body weight, not per pound of body weight, because if you have a 400 pound morbidly obese man, he cannot be eating 400 grams of protein because he's going to be converting, you know, through gluconeogenesis carbohydrates or insulin from his protein. So again, if he's 400 pounds, he's morbidly obese and he's 35 to 40% body fat, he's probably going to be eating 180 grams of protein, which is fine. But that's where people are confused. And so you see people lose a ton of weight on these things because they don't eat. And look, if you're a morbidly obese person and you see the scale and your weight dropping and your pant size is dropping, if you're a man and dress sizes, if you're a woman, you're not going to listen to some, you know, subject matter expert or even your doctor who says, hey, you're doing this wrong. You're going to have rebound weight gain when you stop taking these, these uh, agents because you're crashing metabolism and crashing thyroid. And that's what ends up happening to these people. And so the biggest problem is, is that then they go online and they say, oh, I lost 80 pounds, but I regained 120. It's a scam. Don't take it. And then again, Peter Atia, you know, he goes public and he latches onto the studies. And again, these studies are in these type of people who are comorbid and type two diabetic and not losing body fat correctly you know, within the context of health and longevity, they're not doing any of the things they should be doing. And again, a lot of these times it's not their fault. You know, they're not working with somebody who actually knows how to counsel them, you know, intelligently on how to lose the weight. And so, yes, there is muscle wasting. There is muscle loss. There is bone loss when you're 70 years old and you stop eating food and you don't train and you're still eating like shit. So, I mean, you know, there's, a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword you know, it, everything is context with this. So if you're not teaching them how to lose the weight correctly while they're using these, there are going to be those side effects. But I always tell people that context is key 
And if you do these, if you do this right with these agents, there's never been anything more profound in helping people change their habits. Look, you guys have probably seen this, and I've been writing about this a lot lately. There's all sorts of research that's come into the marketplace in the last three months that shows that GLP-1 agonists and GIP agonists are literally curing people of depression. They're curing people of impulsive habits. Uh, I mean, people are talking about how like their entire life is changing because they feel more positive and motivated because of what the, th you know, the things that it's done to suppress appetite and control, you know, impulse. So they're very, very fascinating agents. Obviously they're so new. There is, the jury is still out. We don't have 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 years of clinical data, but in my personal experience of using these with my, you know, clients. Uh, and people that I speak with, you know, on the internet, you know, which are in the thousands, um, if done right, these things are absolutely life-changing, life-altering, transformative products. I'm going to show you guys um, a before and after, before this show's over, who will be covered in a book uh, of a man who is a uh, a Wall Street executive, uh, health actually in the health business in Wall Street, and the transformation that he made in 42 days using terzapatide. I mean, it's like, when you see the picture, it's like kind of suspended disbelief, you know, like that's not possible. And I'm like, no, it is, you know, and that's what these agents can do again, if you're doing this correctly. Um, all right. So let's just keep going. So again, 0.25 milligram for uh, semaglutide and you can titrate up to 2.4 milligrams. Now, one of the things to talk about with GLPs and you guys are the ones to talk about is um, the idea that if you do this right, you don't really have to titrate the dosage that high. Now, obviously, supremely insulin resistant, morbidly obese, metabolically dysregulated people who don't do the things that you tell them to do about, you know, modulating their lifestyle, you know, getting in the gym. I mean, again, a 400 pound person, it's a lot harder for them to go to the gym and train than it is a, you know, guy lose, trying to lose 25 pounds or a woman trying to lose 25 pounds. But, you know, again, context is king. They don't really need to increase the dosage of these things like so many people do. And then you also have the idea of cost. You know, when these people are taking four to five times the starting weekly dose by the second month or the third month, I mean, their costs are skyrocketing on these products. So it's like, you know, I always say discretion is the better part of our change your lifestyle, you know, use the minimum dosage, the, you know, the minimum effect dosage, uh, and then just continue to modulate based on your lifestyle improving and seeing what happens before you increase. But I see way too many people that after two months are at five times the dose. And now they're not eating any food at all. You know, they definitely are going to have some form of metabolic dysregulation just for taking too high of a dosage and not eating because these things are so effective. So anyway, you know, I wanted to say that just kind of a personal. So terzapatide is obviously the newest one. It's all the rage. If you read the news, which I tell you guys to avoid for the most part, um, but you know, this is going to be already, it's already projected to be the number one pharmaceutical drug in the history of the world. I mean, it's making so much money. I mean, it sells out almost every compounder that sells this, uh, you know, runs out of a supply, you know, at least their supply chain goes dry like twice a month. Uh, even the research chemical companies that I, you know, work with and, you know, connected with run out of this. I mean, it's the number one selling product. I mean, again, it, 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 it's the number one selling pharmaceutical product for a reason. It suppresses appetite better than anything we've ever seen. And it, as a GIP, is enhancing metabolic rate. So now look, I haven't talked about this, but if you are a lean person, you know, a fitness competitor, a person that, you know, is just wanting to look better naked, to be functionally stronger, you know, to be able to look better in your 60s, 70s, and 80s, to carry your kids, to climb Mount Everest, whatever. I mean, these things are profound because you you can take your 16 you know your 14 to 16 hour fast and go 24 hours and do it regularly right like you can easily do two or three 24 hour fasts in a week and again we know all the research from autophagy and hormesis and all these things that happen that if you do that you're going to extend your life you're going to enhance telomerase i mean there's so many things you do to your biological age when you're a regular intermittent faster and again when you take your fasting and again, a lot of people don't know this, but when you take your fasting from 14 to 16 to 20 plus hours, that's when the true fat loss benefits happen. Because when you start tapping in uh, to stubborn fat reserves through catecholamine activation, 
that's when you start changing your physique. And this is where people like, you know, whenever people ask me for advice about fasting, I say, how many hours a day do you fast? Oh, you know, I usually fast from eight o'clock at night till one o'clock in the afternoon or 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, okay, that's great. 15 to 16 hours. I want you to extend your fast for two weeks by four hours a day. Oh, you know, I don't know if I can do that. Okay, well then don't do it. But if you do come back to me and tell me what happens. And every single time, and again, I've written books on fasting going back to 2016, but every single time that I've ever done this and the person's actually adhered to it, they would come back to me and say, oh my God, that's the most insane. It's life altering. I, I, I've lost two inches on my waist. And again, we know this scientifically, metabolically, because when catecholamines, the fight or flight hormones are being activated, they're mobilizing all of the type B or the A2s and the B2 receptors, which are the you know stubborn fat loss adipocytes. And those things have no blood flow. So when you start swimming you know, with catecholamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, you know, noradrenaline, and those things flood those areas of stubborn body fat, it melts it off. So all you have to do is literally go from 16 hours of fasting to 20 and do it for two weeks and watch what happens to your body. Now, that's hard for most people, but not now with terzapatide. Because terzapatide is legitimately turning off your appetite. It's suppressing the desire to eat. Now, again, you can't not eat when you're using GLPs. You have to eat. You've got to get protein. You know, my book, the 30 Days to Shreds book, which is coming, is, you know, an absolute cookie cutter, boil it plate, boilerplate, templatized version of what to do. We actually even have the book organized as like, okay, you're a newbie. You're a mid-level guy, you're advanced. And then we call, you know, FFO, which is fully fucking optimized, right? Like I'll do whatever it takes. I'll use whatever drug, whatever peptide, whatever GLP you tell me, just tell me how to do it, where to get it, when to do it, blah, blah, blah. I want to do it, right? So like, it's all in there. But if you use terzapatide and you can fast two to three days a week, 20 to 24 hours. So literally go an entire day without eating, you will dramatically, change your body composition. And again, in a positive way and nothing before terzapatide has been able to dull or suppress appetite like it does. Uh, and again, all the science shows this, it does also have makes dramatic improvements to HbA one C. Um, I truthfully, I have been using terzapatide now for 18 months on and off. I've searched, I've used, you know, surgically precise dosages of like 0.75. I've used obviously point uh, the normal dose of 2.5. I've even gone up as high as 3.5. Um, I don't think that anyone ever needs to use more than 2.5 milligrams a week. Again, if you use this correctly in the context of insulin controlled living uh, and long-term fasting, it's just, there's nothing better uh, to suppress appetite. And I will definitely tell you guys this too, the one side effect that it's obviously known for is smaller bowel movements and who doesn't want smaller bowel movements, right? So, I mean, all these, you know, rumors on the internet of it causing, um, you know, issues with uh, the colon or gallbladders. I mean, again, these are people who are literally still eating like shit. They're flaming dumpster fires of, of inflammation and metabolic dysregulation. And they're still using this you know, because it obviously suppresses their appetite, but they don't change. And so they're just piling dog shit upon dog shit into their body. Those are the people that experience side effects. Again, I've worked with hundreds of people who have used this, who have dramatically, dramatically altered their life. I mean, they, I mean, these people, I mean, you'll read this when you guys, for you guys that are lucky enough to get a copy of this book and read it, there's an entire chapter of eight people who literally transform their life. And it's not just, you know, the physical, it's like the mental, the spiritual, like how much more in control of themselves they are. And I really just say that, you know, it's terzapatide more than anything else, because again, the study and the science continues to come out about how it changes human behaviors. And so again, I just love this again, 2.5 milligrams. Again, they tell you to increase your titrate up to double the dose in the second month. You absolutely do not need to do that. Now, again, when I say that, that's with the caveat that you're not 400 pounds. You know, some people who are absolutely insulin resistant will probably do have to go a little bit high of a dosage, uh, especially if they're not cleansing their lifestyle. But I've worked with people who are 100 pounds overweight and they stayed at 2.5 milligrams for three months and they lost 80 pounds. 
and they actually felt good doing it. So it's absolutely possible to stay at that 2.5 milligram dose. I, again, I'm a minimalist in everything I do. It's always less is more. Um, I do not think that anyone needs to increase the dosage with, again, the caveat being if that person is incredibly insulin resistant, you may have to make exceptions. Um, so MOT C, again, this is one of those like amazing mitochondrial optimizing peptides. I find, and again, my personal opinion and experience, the more insulin resistant and less mitochondrial optimized a human being is, the better effect they're going to get from MOTC. But every time I say that, then I end up talking to like a professional, you know, athlete or bodybuilder or, you know, racer or something, MMA person. And they'll tell me like, bro, my God, MOTC is the most insane energy producer of anything I've ever used. So, you know, I would just say that MOTC is one of those products where like you have to experiment with it. I definitely recommend it though for people that are metabolically dysregulated. There's so many different dosing strategies, you know, 10 milligram once a week, five milligram, three times per week, uh, you know, an entire 10 milligram vial for four weeks and then, you know, cutting it in half. Uh, I've literally used two milligrams every third day for two weeks, then five milligrams all at once. I mean, I, there's just, there's, there's no consensus. Um, almost everyone that uses MOTC feels some form of energetic stimulation, but as far as fat loss, you're going to see better uh, results um, for people who are more insulin resistant and, you know, have a lot more body fat to use. So 5-amino-1-MQ, this is probably the strongest oral peptide formulation that people, you know, again, can visibly feel and, 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 and notice the effect because it obviously improves uh, muscle retention, it, you know, improves, uh, anabolism and, uh, 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 what do you call it? Nitrogen, nitric oxide. So, I mean, there's so many things it's doing from an energetic standpoint. Um, but then it also in people that are heavy, it, it helps with, um, you know, fat breakdown again, assuming everything else is dialed in, they're exercising, they're doing cardiovascular and, and, uh, resistance training, um, the neuromuscular function. I mean, this is again, a small, it's not technically a peptide, it's a small molecule, but it literally is amazing. Now, the one caveat with this product that I tell people is this is the one peptide that absolutely stops working in four weeks. Now, there may be some exceptions to the rule. You know, I've had women tell me, oh, no, it works great for me for six to eight weeks. Okay, great. But in most people, in my experience, is this literally stops working in four to six weeks. Okay, so just, you know, when you start dosing with this, you just, you know, kind of expect that that might happen in your patients. And so, you know, you just titrate off. Now, depending on the peptide, you're going to get different feedback from different people. Dr. Seeds will say different things than I'll say, but like in my experience, I like to take the same amount of time off that I was on. So again, to avoid antibody buildup and to get back to a place where like, you know, body is, you know, is attempting to uh, achieve homeostasis. You know, I would say if you put them on five amino for six weeks, I would keep them off for six weeks before I would start it up again. Now, uh, a question that a lot of people ask me is like, okay, Jay, that's cool. I understand. But what about starting another peptide at the same time? You can, but it's also depending on the method, the mechanism of action. Is it a healing peptide? Is it a nootropic peptide? Is it a growth hormone agonist peptide? You know, for something like 5-amino, if you wanted to go to tesamorelin or ipamorelin, that's fine. Because that's they're basically working diff different signaling molecules and different, you know, energetic systems in the body. But if you were like using uh, MOTC and then you went to 5-amino, no, that would be a mistake because you're already, you just went from a mitochondrial optimizer to a mitochondrial optimizer. So you would want to downregulate. So those are kind of rules with stacking. Uh, okay, so longevity peptides. Um, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with GHKCU. Uh, you know, I sold a company for a lot of money. Our base product was a facial serum and a cream that was consisted of a 3% grade of copper peptide GHKCU. So I call this the sham wow peptide. You know, as I write about in my book, it has probably more clinical applications for more, uh, you know, modalities uh, to bio biological systems than anything else. I will tell you guys this, Dr. Lauren Pickart, who I'm blessed now to be a friend, friend with, the FDA and the DEA went after this dude. Like, when he started promoting the benefits of this product back in the 70s and 80s, they shut him down real quick because this product is a, an amazing pro uh, product. But this is the definitely the best transdermal peptide that we know of right now. Again, readily available. You can use this on the skin. 
You can literally put this in the hair. I literally know people that inject this into their scalp. I don't know why they're that insane. You know, hair regrowth is that important to them, but I'm like, you know what? You're not going to get the same. It's not going to be better to inject it in the scalp any more than it is just to put it in a transdermal, uh, you know, cream or uh, serum. So amazing product. Again, it does, it, it does repair uh, damaged DNA and enhances immunity. It's actually a very, and I'm not supposed to say this, but I'll say this to you guys anyway. It's a very powerful um, photomodulation, right? So it literally blocks the harmful UV burning rays of the sun at specific um, grades, which is 3%. I mean, we have like pictures before we sold the company of people that forgot to apply uh, sun screen uh, who went down slopes. You know, they were skiing like in the winter in Colorado and they put on the serum of GHKCU on one side of their face. And like the other side of the face is completely obliterated red blistering sun because they were on the slopes for seven hours. And this side is completely protected. And he was like, it's the most insane thing I've ever seen. I'm like, yeah, we're not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> but it's a very profound product to block, uh, again, the damaging burning rays of the sun. So again, wound healing enhances collagen. It's an angiogenic peptide. So it you know, increases red blood cell formation and, and stimulates red blood cell creation. And of course, enhances elastin. Look, we've had people that had severe scars who put it on for two months and it reduced the size of the scars up to 60 to 70%. Again, this is just an absolutely profound peptide. It's not used enough. It's not understood as well as it should be. But again, a 3% grade of it is not clinical. And I know this like the back of my hand um, and it can be sold over the counter and there's nothing stronger. There's literally nothing in the entire marketplace for facial regeneration of all the high-end boutique products, you know, Merle's, Estee Lauder, all the high-end companies do not sell anything as strong as just GHKCU in 3% grade. That's how amazing that is. Okay, so CJC1295, we already talked about this. This is a very strong growth hormone producing agonist. I hate this product because I flush and get the niacin feeling from it. And it also just, I just don't like the way I feel on it. You know, it's a... 45 minutes to one hour if you're one of those people that feels that effect of CJC. But again, I cannot argue with its profound growth hormone agonist releasing. You know, again, if you are familiar with whether it's D, a, D, a no, no DAC or DAC, uh, that's drug affinity complex. And again, that just measures or enhances the half life of the product, whether it's with DAC or without DAC. Uh, the dosage is again 0.10 milliliters of 2000 micrograms. The one thing about this product that also drives me nuts is that. Um, most compounders and research chemical companies uh, combine it and it drives people nuts attempting to figure out how to dose it because usually CJC will be 10 milligrams and the IPA will be six. <laughs> so they're trying to figure out the dosage and they're like, Jay, what do I do? The peptide calculator doesn't work in this deal. I'm like, well, you know, you got to back out each one and figure it together. And they're like, yeah, but I still got to pull it out of the same vial. So anyway, I hate this product when it's combined with Ipamorelin, but it definitely has clinical efficacy. Uh, skipping IPA because we already talked about IPA. Um, I think I told you guys the dosage is 200 to 300 micrograms, one to three times a day. I find that 200 micrograms at night before bed for women is absolutely the be all end all for peptide um, cell, you know, st uh, stimulation of skin quality, improving elasticity and deep restorative sleep. Uh, it's also great for fat loss. So Epitalon, um, am I still good with time or do you want me to speed up? You're doing fine. Okay, cool. Just let me know if you, if I need to shut her down. Um, so Epitalon is, uh, you know, again, a longevity peptide. I think some of you guys know, I, I recommend that anyone who's 50 years or older should be doing at least one cycle of Epitalon a year. There are many different dosing strategies, which I'll get to again. But again, this is... Uh, improves production of telomerase, which obviously extends our telomeres, which as we know, you know, the, one of the theories of aging is that as we get older, the end caps start popping off and they start shortening. And so obviously our lifespan reduces. So this is clinically proven to extend lifespan. If you use this product in combination with thymolin, which is really a bioregulator more so than a peptide, you get a double whammy effect. So I recommend using a pitolon with thymolin, but again, it's extends lifespan. The Cavinson protocol is 10 milligrams per day. 
again, sublingually, right? So if you get a bioregulator of this, it's a capsule and I don't even have time. I do have it at the end of this present presentation, but maybe we can do another presentation on bioregulators because I am really knowledgeable about bioregulators, but I don't have the time to get into them today, but they're amazing. They are probably going to be bigger than peptides when we get more uh, you know, access to them. Right now, if you want to buy a bioregulator, Russia controls the supply. It's very difficult to find any across the world right now. There are a lot of companies that sell them, but their supply is so limited right now. But 10 milligrams is an oral bioregulator. And if you want to inject it, which is what most people can get in the States right now, which is that bottle of Limitless, it's 10 milligrams, 20 days. Okay. And again, you only have to do this once a year. I mean, there are guys out there that recommend doing it twice a year. Um, so thymolin, again, is more of a bioregulator, but it can be injected. So if you combine thymolin with epitalon, you definitely are going to extend your lifespan. Again, thymolin, um, you know, the thymol scan obviously regulates Im immunity. So by injecting thymolin, you're upregulating your immunity in combination with um, epitalon. So again, both unreal products, boost immune response, extend lifespan, just amazing products together. Um, five to 20 milligrams per day. Uh, or five to 10 milligrams per day for anti-aging. If you have an immunity disorder, this is also a product that you can use obviously for that patient. Um, so again, the combination of both is five milligram of each injected intramuscularly or subcutaneously for 20 days consecutive. And you can do that once a year or twice a month. They basically say the older you are, the, be the, the, the better it is to run it twice. But if you're between 50 and 60, you probably can just get away with it once a year. Um, okay, so cognitive, I'm gonna roll through these. Personally, very transparently, I do not feel the effects that a lot of people feel on the cognitions, nootropics, peptides. Uh, like I said, I like um, tesofensine better than I like any of these. Of all of these products, I'll just scroll through them really quick. C-Max, again, a Russian peptide. It does reduce pain. It, you know, it's good at uh, helping reverse like stroke effects. Uh, reversing alcohol effects, obviously it improves learning capacity. You can use this intranasally. It's one of the, a lot of the nootropic peptides are used intranasally. Um, I don't like putting anything up my nose, you know, truthfully, I just don't like the feeling that it generates. So I don't really like it, but I, in using all of these nootropic peptides, I never get the effect that I got from tesofensine. And as I've been very open the last five years, I compare everything to modafinil, you know, a 50 milligram dosage of modafinil to every other nootropic peptide. And I don't feel any of these things are as pronounced and as strong as modafinil. So when I compare, you know, nootropic products to modafinil, it's kind of like that's the line in the sand or the line of demarcation. And I don't feel any of these things uh, improve my cognition like modafinil did or tesofensine does with the BDNF stimulation. So I like, if I'm going to pick a nootropic peptide, I like Slank and I like Dihexa. And again, both of these are scientifically shown to boost uh, short-term, you know, cognition and of course, learning speed. And also it does enhance uh, memory. Uh, the dosages are again, all in here. And, and, and by the way, for any of you guys that want a copy of the PDF book, I'm happy to send it to you. Just email me tonight or email William and he'll give you my email address and I'll send it. Or William, maybe I'll just send you the PDF and you can send it to people, whatever. But I'll, I'm happy to give you guys the PDF of the book and all these dosages are in the book. Um, and one of the, you know, the real highlights of the book is uh, you can just literally go to the table of contents and look at the peptide and say, click on recommended dosage and it takes you right there. That's all you need to know. You don't care about the science. Um, so again, dihexa is like the one peptide I can use at 40 milligrams and I feel it. The rest of them, I don't feel it. When I, when I, when I take, and by the way, 40 milligrams is a heroic dose of dihexa. You'll see you know, eight milligrams, people feel it. I'm like, how the fuck do you feel eight milligrams? I don't even like, it doesn't exist. I mean, maybe I'm a mutant, I don't know. But at 40 milligrams, I take, I feel something. But again, I don't feel what I feel with modafinil or tesofensine. Again, it can also be used transdermally. Um, so cerebralizing. So let's talk about this one for a second. So this is one of those peptides. I'm sure some of you guys know that if you start selling this to your patients, and the alphabets find out that you're selling this, they probably will come and investigate you because this is a very interesting peptide. I'll leave it at that. There are people out there that I know of who are using high dosages of this to literally reverse neurodegenerative disorders. You name them, I won't mention them because I don't want it to be used against me in court of law. 
but they absolutely are using cerebral in at very high dosages to reverse neurodegenerative disorder. Uh, you know, a lot of people are in fear of this because it's poor seen, usually brain pig brains that they're using this on. Uh, it's too expensive to use human brains <laughs> to get this and make this. Um, and that would probably not be legal, but it is a very profound peptide to, again, uh, repair the brain. And I do know people that are using this in autistic people, full spectrum, mild spectrum, and they're seeing results in it. It's difficult to find. Uh, actually, right now, Limitless has it and is selling it. For all I know, they, they got it in on Saturday. It probably sold out by now um, because this is like such a high in-demand peptide. You cannot get this from a compound pharmacy. If a compound pharmacy is selling this to you, you guys don't tell anybody that you're getting it from them and be quiet. <laughs> Yes, they're not supposed to sell this. And if they find out that they're selling this, they'll probably shut them down. So again, recommended dosage, this is all in the book, but stroke, TBI, vascular dementia, Alzheimer's, there's different levels, different uh, durations of treatments, but um, it's amazing. It's an absolutely amazing peptide. Orexin A. So this is one of those peptides that was actually used for uh, people that had narcolepsy. Um, you know, they're finding that it does all sorts of other things. Um, again, it, it, you know, helps the sleep wake cycle, um, you know, improves any energy homeostasis. It does a lot of stuff. It's affecting the hypothalamus, but that's what they were originally using. This was for helping people that had basically narcolepsy, uh, you know, now insomnia, depression, addiction, you know, again, everything, it seems like always goes back to some form of Alzheimer's, but, um, I don't obviously use this, but in the people that I know that have used this, they really do like it as a wakefulness agent. Uh, you know, I've had people push me and they're like, dude, you got to try it because it's like modafinil. But I'm like, eh, I don't like putting shit up my nose. So uh, I don't, I've never used it, but I have heard good things about it. So, I mean, again, if you want to attempt to experiment this as a wakefulness agent, go ahead, be my guest. There's the dosage, 100 to 150. Um, so FGL, so I use this when Taylor Maid used to give this to me. Um, again, a lot of scientific research on it being a neurotrophic peptide, but I never really felt anything. Um, you know, maybe it was protecting my brain somewhat, which obviously it's been shown to do. They, they use it, you know, Dr. Mark Gordon, I think pretty much uses this with a lot of his, um, TBI guys now, the military guys he works with, but I just, again, mixed opinions in the biohacking community. You know, personally, I never really saw anything with it. You know, there's the recommended dosage. So PE 2228, also one that I have not used, but I have heard amazing things about this peptide. So this would be the peptide that you would want to put somebody who is a got a benzodiazepine addiction on because it's been shown to uh, remove the effect, quote unquote, that people were seeking from the benzos. And so this is kind of the product that you would want to put somebody on to replace them. Again, 400 micrograms. Uh, administered intranasally. Um, Melanotan 1, I could literally do an entire presentation on. This is a peptide that absolutely 100% increases consciousness. Uh, if you're a meditator and, you know, someone who is into silencing the mind, getting into alpha states of alpha brainwave states of or theta brainwave states of consciousness, this is the product that you want to use. I mean, most of you guys also know that it does enhance melanin cortoid receptor complex formation, which means it will stimulate your melanocytes. So it will darken your skin. I have been using melanotan one since 2008. Uh, I was way whiter than I am now. Uh, before I started using this, it absolutely does darken in your melanin uh, receptor complexes or enhances melanin formation in your receptor complexes. But it does a lot of other things. Um, you know, the other tanning quote unquote peptide that you guys are probably aware of is melanotan two. I hate melanotan two. It will darken the skin more, but it leaves like an orangish oompa loompa look to it. And it also has a lot of negative potential side effects in that it enhances mole formation. Uh, it darkens moles. Um, and it also can create nausea in a lot of its users. Like 40% of people who take it or inject it feel nauseous. I hate that product. Um, you know, I've had friends that have taken it and literally grew moles overnight from using it. So I, you know, I kind of stay away from it. Um, but melanotan one, I love, and it's, you know, if you want to read a deep dive article on it, you know, go to my website, jcampbell.com and read about this, but it absolutely does stimulate consciousness. Uh, if, again, if you're a meditator and you inject a micro dose of this in the morning and you go into your 
meditative practice, you will get into that state of consciousness way faster than if you don't use it. Um, so again, if you want to enhance consciousness, a very small 0.25 once, twice a week, tanning 0.5. Uh, up to 1.5. And then of course there is an immunity seeds loves this product for immunity. I mean, I've never used the dosage level that you would have to use for immunity. Cause you can see it's a lot higher. Uh, but obviously again, when we understand melanin cortoid receptor complex functioning better than we do now at a metabolic and cellular level, we will like break open the keys to the universe because there's a lot going on there. Um, okay. So immunity. So I think a lot of you guys know, like so thymus and alpha one, I literally carry this away, carry this around with me everywhere I go when I travel the world. Like I'm flying tomorrow from Mexico back to Florida. My wife and I just bought a home in Florida and I got to go there and deal with all that. Uh, but I carry this with me wherever I travel around the world because it is such a profound immune enhancer or mod, immuno, immunodilator. Um, if you get sick and you start injecting this, you know, whether it's a bioweapon or just a garden variety uh, sinus infection from you know traveling at 35,000 feet, breathing recycled air, it will dramatically improve uh, your immune function and, and get you back to health faster. Uh, if you're having an invasive surgery, you should be loading up on this before taking it during. I mean, there's just nothing this thing doesn't do. It is also FDA approved now, uh, but thankfully a lot of the research chemical companies sell it. I buy as much as I can of this at all times. And I literally carry four vials around with me in an insulin pack when I travel. That's how much I believe in this product. I've been using this product since 2017. Uh, it's just amazing. I mean, again, it's a whole conversation about it, but nothing improves uh, immune response and functioning or treats various disease states as well as it does. So, I mean, again, I'm just a lover. 1.5 milligram injected sub Q twice a week. There's a lot of people out there, Dr. Heather um, Lewis, not Heather Lewis, um, what is her name? The doctor in Florida, Heather, whatever her name is, Fernandez. She, she, you know, believes that you should take this every day. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there that absolutely love this product. I mean, I don't take it every day, but I mean, I do, do take it twice a week. And again, I carry it with me when I travel because you never know when the next bioweapon's coming. So LL37, this is also a very profound antimicrobial, antifungal, um, you know, antipathogenic, peptide it does so many things uh to enhance uh immunity and function and literally kills nasty shit you know if you had literally covid this is what you want to take this will stop covid long covid faster than probably anything i mean you would definitely want to com combine uh ta1 with this product but this is a very, very powerful peptide. Again, one that I have in my refrigerator year round. I don't carry it with me like I do with TA1. Um, I probably should, but I don't have room usually in my insulin cooler. Um, but it's an amazing product. You know, again, definitely something that you want to recommend or, uh, you know, prescribe for somebody who's sick because it does a lot of amazing things. Same thing with this one. Now you got to be careful. You know, you can't say, oh, this is the product that you give to somebody who's an end stage COVID or is having breathing and airway uh, restrictive issues due to COVID, but this will absolutely enhance uh, oxygenation, improve, you know, uh, red blood cell formation and flow immediately. And this is something that you can give someone who has a severe case of COVID, even though, again, they don't want you telling people that, um, but it's again, very powerful. It can be injected or it can also be intranasally used, which is sometimes good if you're, you know, working with a uh, you know, a, a morbidly sick hospitalized patient, um, you know, who you want to get them back to health. So healing, I'll go really fast because I think everybody is very familiar with this. So BPC-157 and TB-500, which is the next one, uh, are truly combined a Wolverine healing stack of peptides. They will uh, enhance the rate of healing to four, to I would even say 10X, depending on like what level of dosage you're using. They're not miracle workers in that, like if you have a compressed vertebrae and you're bone on bone, they're not going to heal the vertebrae. Um, they're not going to heal the erector spinae if you're, again, bone on bone in the low back. But for everything else, torn ankle, torn shoulder, torn labrum, sprained elbow, uh, you know, uh, sprained ankle, you know, an MCL, not a torn ACL where it's totally detached, but like a, a mild, you know, let's say a second degree tear of an MCL or a PCL. You don't need surgery. You need to inject this into the origin of them combined and it will dramatically speed the rate of healing. I mean, I've had these conversations they are almost like now 
uh, morality conversations with like orthopedic surgeons of like, what do I do with a 55 year old patient? Do I repair their ACL or do I just give them a course of BPC TB 500 for three months? And I'm like, ah, that's your decision. But the science shows that TB 500 and BPC in combination will heal an elderly or an older or an aging you know, patient uh, just as well as a, a much more expensive surgery will. So it's kind of like, you know, like I said, it's kind of like a, a moral, you know, question now of like, what do we do? You know, do we take the money and charge their insurance or do we just give them on a course of BPC TB 500? But uh, I would, I would say that eventually TB 500 and BPC 157 um, will replace a lot of unnecessary uh, orthopedic procedures and maneuvers. Uh, so again, the dosages are different, but you know, in combination, BPC and TB 500 are they're second to none for healing. Uh, IPA and TESA, I already kind of told you guys about this for building muscle and increasing uh, cellular mass. This is the number one product in combination. Again, it's a massive tissue regenerator and it will also help in the healing process. So again, if you have a muscle wasting person who has been injured, they're, they're burned uh, uh, patient, or again, they were, they, un they were exposed to like toxic chemicals or something and you need to uh, maintain muscle mass and again, tissue regeneration. This is what you give them. You give them Ipitessa and BPC and TB 500, hundred percent. Um, I've already talked about GHKCU. So those are the kind of the variations between taking them all together. Again, this is all in the book. Um, so I'm not going to cover, let's see. Uh, so this is, I don't have to cover this. This is kind of what I do. If you guys, you know, if there's time, I mean, I'll go through it really quick, but this is the kind of stuff that I use. Uh, obviously I use therapeutic testosterone. I do use the transcrotal cream. So I put it on my scrotum in the morning, two to three clicks. I don't even have to do a second dosage. Uh, you know, I'm definitely a person that responds well to the dopamine signaling and the enhanced energy production of therapeutic testosterone. But, um, I think you guys all know about therapeutic testosterone. I don't have to get into that, but there's really, in my opinion, hopefully I don't offend any of you guys that are prescribing pellets. And I will say that obviously some testosterone therapeutically is better than none, but I only really like the delivery systems of uh, injectable every other day or every day or the transcrotal cream. I know there's other delivery systems. And again, I will definitely agree that, you know, some is better than none. And there are people out there that can't do anything but pellets, but I don't really like any of the other delivery systems. You know, pellets have been proven to cleave molecularly at different rates and speeds. And everybody is biochemically unique in N of one. So I don't really like the way pellets are broken down metabolically. So I'm not a big believer in pellets, but again, if you have a way to get them uh, therapeutic hormones, both male or female, and that's really their only option because they're, you know, from a patient adherence standpoint, it's the only way they're going to do it, then that's great. You know, get them on that. Uh, obviously I'm a big believer in desiccated thyroid. I do not believe, uh, I should say, no, you cannot optimize the endocrine system without also optimizing thyroid. Uh, too many physicians miss that. You know, I know it's a big bugaboo for a lot of you guys to like prescribe thyroid hormones because that's like state medical licensing board scrutiny, but you know, desiccated is obviously your way around that because it's not, it's much more mild. You're, you know, giving them T1, T2, T3, and T4 versus T3 and T4, which ultimately at some point causes an imbalance. You know, if you've ever read the book, Stop the Thyroid Badness, you know, which is an amazing book for women to learn about thyroid dysfunction or mal malfunction or dysregulation. Um, almost all of those problems are caused by physicians prescribing T3 and T4 to women in high dosages, and they miss hitting T1 and T2, and eventually it causes complete dysregulation. Um, and then they're, you know, addicted to high dosages of T3 and T4 for life, and their metabolism is connected to it, and it's just a nightmare. So, you know, I like desiccated thyroid. I think that you have to use that. Uh, I'm a huge metformin person. Um, you know, I've written a 10,000 word article. It's published on EDU. It's around the world. I'm probably the biggest online advocate of metformin. I'm familiar with all the research. Do not believe anyone out there that says that metformin causes thyroid. I mean, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. That's complete bullshit. Uh, it doesn't really cause any negative side effects. It does uh, control and uh, regulate mTOR signaling. So if you are a competitive strong man or professional track and field athlete, it will suppress blood glucose uh, and glycogen uh, repletion to a point where you might not get maximal force production, but any other person who's aging and wants to live the longest and strongest should be on some form of metformin. Uh, I do not agree that, um, you know, uh, berberin, uh, what's the, the, the highest level version of berberin right now, I forget what it's called, but there's a, you know, really good version of berberin 
it's not as studied and I don't trust the supplement industry versus big pharma, even though big pharma is demonic in a lot of ways, they do have their sterility processing control dialed in. So I like metformin, but I mean, again, metformin does so many things to extend life. It enhances uh, acromantia formation in the microbiome. It kills completely systemic inflammation. If you guys have patients that have all sorts of autoimmune, you know, dysregulation and quote unquote diagnoses and diseases that, you know, are this, that, and the other, I love giving people 500 milligrams of metformin and then eventually bid a thousand, you know, five and five, because it crushes systemic inflammation so well that eventually they, they don't even have an autoimmune response or disease anymore because they don't have systemic inflammation. And a lot of those people that have these autoimmune um, diagnoses are worriers you know, they get the diagnosis or the second or the third, and they're like, oh my God, I have this and I have to live this for all my life. And then they never sleep because they're stressed out about all their diagnoses. So if you give them metformin and it just crushes their systemic inflammation from their worrying and their anxiety and their lack of sleep, they see dramatic improvement. But I mean, again, I have so much research on this. Uh, if you want my article, you know, just go to jcampbell.com and search on it. I've already talked about melanotan. Uh, if you're a meditator, uh, you know, again, you're introspective or contemplative. It's an amazing peptide for that. And of course, it does have the secondary benefit of darkening your skin, which will protect you from the UV damage that the sun can be if you're in a sun place. Uh, I, again, I kind of talked about it earlier. I'm a huge advocate of human growth hormone, obviously pharmaceutical graded human growth hormone, uh, genotropin or nortotropin are my favorites. I do not like any of the US manufacturers, which is obviously Searle. Uh, which is Omnitrope. I think it's horseshit. I've worked with tons of professional MMA people that are getting scripted from, you know, select people, uh, the US graded growth hormone, and they eventually switch to genotropin from Pfizer and they throw away their US growth hormone and ask me if it was fake. And I say, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. But the difference between the genotropin, which is obviously Pfizer, uh, and the nortotropin, which is Nordisk versus the human, I mean, the human, the U S made growth hormone is like night and day. Uh, you know, every, anyone 50 and up who's not considering using a surgically precise dose of growth hormone, I think is missing the boat. Don't believe any of the smoke and mirror bullshit about growth hormone causing, you know, this, that, and the other, you know, is it possible that a high dose of growth hormone, not the levels that I recommend, you know, can exacerbate uh, you know, metastatic tumor formation in people that have a genetic predisposition, which I don't even know if that really makes sense when people say that, because everything is lifestyle and epigenetics. Um, is it possible? Maybe, but not at one I use or 0.75 I use or 1.25 I use a day, Monday through Friday. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, again, assuming your lifestyle is dialed in, you're living insulin controlled, you're doing everything else. Um, so again, I love metformin. Uh, I already talked about Tesso. I mean, I, I love that product. Uh, so terzapatide. So again, do you have to be obese or metabolically dysregulated or insulin resistant or type two diabetic or pre to use terzapatide? I don't think so. I think that you can get to a place where you use this as if you're a faster, especially you use this a very low maintenance dosage, maybe once a month um, to basically keep your appetite in check and keep again, the, through the GIP functionality of this, uh, improving glucogen, your glucogen insulin response. I think it's an amazing product. I don't think it's been studied in that level yet, but I think that eventually as more and more time goes on and more and more people become familiar with this, um, they will see that there is a value to this. And again, like I told you guys, the retrotrutide, we're going to get news on that on Monday of next week. If that product comes out, it'll probably just blow this product away because then you don't even have to worry about all those different pathways that we do have to address now to do these right. Because it's going to be, again, like the ultimate fat burning uh, equalizing, uh, GLP. Um, so, I mean, I've already talked about the, um, dosages. Whoops. Sorry about that. Um, what's the last one? So melatonin. So I'll, I think this is the last slide. Oh no, we're not going to go into bioregulators. So I don't have time. We'll do bioregulators another time. But so this is the last slide for this presentation. So melatonin again, tried and true supplement. The latest research is coming out of the like deep bio hacking life extension communities is using melatonin at two to three grams before bedtime, like 45 minutes before bed in combination with pineolon, which pineolon is, you know, uh, essentially a, a pineal gland bioregulator. And I am not kidding you guys. When I tell you this, if you want to astral travel and leave your body, this is the way to do it.
Now, I have personally no experience doing this myself, but I have talked to more than 20 people who have done this and are like, dude, this is the gateway out of here. <laughs> so if you want to do that, again, you know, two to three grams of melatonin is an absolute heroic dose. The leading researcher in the world is, you know, Dr. Russell Ryder, who's a friend of mine. And, you know, he uses like 500 milligrams of, you know, melatonin at night before bed. And that's a, to me, a heroic dose. So, I mean, like if you want to go into the realms of two to three grams, you know, you got to buy obviously bulk melatonin powder and you put it in the gums and you let it leach in, you know, you don't swallow it, you let it absorb. And if you're using the Pinealon bioregulator, you know, good luck to you. <laughs> but I hear all sorts of amazing things with, I mean, again, melatonin obviously improves the sleep wake cycle you know, incre incre increases uh, polyphasic sleep and, you know, deep restorative sleep. And so, you know, it has all those things, but I really like throw it in here now because there's something about it that it, you know, enhances, um, you know, the spiritual connectivity of the physical body. So, you know, if you want to do that, like be my guest, you know, you could probably Google that and find more of that. See, look at that in the, in this presentation, I say 10 to 30 milligrams, right. But the newest stuff is two to three grams. So I do have a bunch of slides here on bioregulators, but I see there's a bunch of questions or a bunch of comments in the chat. So I think I'd rather address that. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Well, uh, you're not too enthusiastic about your topic, are you, Jay? <laughs> this is what optimization looks like at 8.30 at night. By the way, I've had six calls today. And just a little bit of caffeine with my uh, electrolyte zero in Mexico. <laughs> okay. All righty. Well, um, there's some questions in the chat. I, I'll read them to you if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. From Dr. Nario, when you say hormone optimization, are you just pertaining to the sex hormones or other endocrine hormones also? Um, yeah, so definitely both. And that's where most docs, in my experience, miss it is they, they look for sex and they don't look at thyroid and you always have to do both I've, I've never seen a person who was truly optimized hormonally who wasn't working with both thyroid to optimize and of course the endocrine system okay uh, what is your level of low igf1 to consider treatment that's a really good question um i don't want to give you a number i should know that number off the top of my head it's in my notes and stuff like that but when you're at the low end of the actual, you know, quote unquote, bell curve of the standard mean deviation on wherever you're looking at it, and depending on your age, you can use um, a low dose of growth hormone. Um, and again, I'll say this, if you're over 50, you don't have much. I don't care what your levels are showing, and I don't care really what kind of fitness you're in, especially if you live in the, in the Western world or the first world, we are absolutely under siege biochemically. There is so many contaminants in the environment now that like, it's just, it's prudent, you know, to obviously look into hormonal optimization and also, you know, improving your growth hormone production. Cause you're just, it's just not possible. You have to be an absolute genetic specimen in the top 1% to maintain it. It's just, it's incredible how bad we're under siege at this point. Yeah. Uh, we, we try to uh, match the symptoms of, uh, you know, low growth hormone or, or IGF one. Yep. Uh, with, with the level we usually shoot for 200 to 250 yep um yep uh, in that range and you know yep. if they're below that and they don't really have any symptoms i kind of leave them alone if they're a little yep. bit you know if they have some symptoms now dr gordon insists you have to do growth hormone levels igf1 and igf bp3 yeah and, yep and yep. you know i yep. guess technically you should but one it's kind of expensive and I'm it's not totally sure. expensive uh, yeah, it's I'm expensive. not sure. I'm not sure what what benefit you get from the other two. Um, uh, you know, uh, so we do IGF ones here, and and that's and again we go by symptoms. Uh, also, T totally. And Mark is just covering you know all angles and avenues. You know, with the people he's working with, he's also doing so much pro bono work too. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. So, at what level is considered low? Not enough. Uh, for, okay. So we just talked about that. So. Yep. Um, Usually anything under 200, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll question them uh, uh, completely. And we want to know things like executive function is really, I think, important. Exactly. Here. Exactly. Which is, if you don't know what that is, it's um, memory concentration, uh, uh, task uh, initiation, task completion, multitasking, um, uh, obsessive compulsive uh, tendencies, dark moods, paranoia. So 
Um, those, <laughs> those, those are the, did I get that right, Jane? You did. <laughs> Paranoia. Well, I mean, I would just also say, though, to add to what you were saying, like, and I think most of you guys know this and gals, I keep saying guys and gals. I know there's both, both of you guys watching here tonight. And again, I'm grateful that all of you are watching here. I appreciate it. Um, when you're, when you're hormonally optimized, a lower level of growth hormone concomitantly is only going to enhance the process, right? I mean, there's so many cellular pathways that are upregulated and benefit from it. Um, but you're right. I mean, there has to be, you know, some form of like, is there an awareness that you need growth hormone? But in my experience, I just see like people really benefit when they're older and they're already hormonally optimized with a low dose of it. I mean, again, it just depends on the dose though, too. Like what, when you prescribe it, what is the dosage that you're usually recommending? Um, for uh, IGF one? No, for growth hormone. Oh, usually about one unit, um, five yep. nights a week. In, in exactly. That yeah. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a very thin, very fine line between just enough and, and actually becoming dependent on it. So yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and, and I say the same thing. Like I never, I don't even have guys ever go over 1.5. I think, I think a person can do two, you know, for accelerated healing. Like if they were really traumatized and they want to do that for like two or three weeks. But like I said, like when you start going over two IUs of growth hormone, the side effects become obvious. You know, you have water yeah. retention, carpal tunnel. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's a point of no return. Right. Um, do you cycle oral peptides as well? Is the so yes, you, you absolutely should. And again, there really are not a lot of oral peptides that are out there. Yes, you can take BPC. Uh, you know, Limitless makes BPC in a form of arginine salt, which actually extends the half-life and also uh, enhances... Uh, it's solubility in the gut membrane. So you're going to get a longer half-life with an arginine salt form of BPC than anything else. But again, you know, I tell people this all the time, you cannot use oral BPC to heal an ankle injury. Mm -hmm. All of the oral BPC formulations out there do not have enough to provide a clinical benefit. And I know that makes seeds mad when I say that, but I don't care. You know, like you're not going to get outside of the microbiome the benefit that you would if you're seeking for a soft tissue injury and repair. Yeah, I, have, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I, I've used a lot of BPC injectables yep. and the orals and, um, you no know, repair. any type of tissue, tissue injury, it has to be the injectable. A hundred percent. But see, a lot of people will don't know that, you know, they're being lied to or being reading bullshit on the internet and they think they can take it and they, you know, the same, these are the people that come back and say, oh, peptides don't work. And then you're like, what do you mean they don't work? And they're like, oh, I took the BBC for my, my elbow. And I'm like, dude, it never even got to the elbow. Right. Exactly. So um, and our, our people here know a lot about peptides. For sure. <laughs> uh, what is the connection between cancer, Hashimoto's? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I, I think they're saying what kind of contraindiction yeah. there was a typo. Yeah. Um, that's actually a great question. Um, you know, Hashimoto's is one of those things where you're going to get 10 different, you know, if you ask 10 different people, you're going to get 10 different answers. You know, my opinion, cancer is a, you know, ontological mutation of the cell. Um, there is a psychogenic effect, you know, people that worry about getting cancer uh, usually focus on creating cancer and, you know, it ends up happening. You know, it's the whole quantum physics, you know, what you focus on tends to manifest. Um, I personally, do not think that peptides or even a low dose of growth hormone is going to, again, exacerbate or stimulate, you know, a metastatic tumor uh, to grow or to, you know, to form, you know, I mean, again, most of the time cancer comes from a long term of worry of, you know, obviously not living healthy life, you know, being comorbid, being sick, eating too much sugar, drinking too much alcohol, whatever, all these different epigenetic factors. But um, I don't see a correlation. Again, this is my opinion. Uh, and obviously working with people for close to 20 years with peptides, I don't see a correlation in it. I mean, is it possible? Are there outliers? Yes. Um, as far as Hashimoto's, I mean, you know, that's probably, you can answer that question better than me, Bill. I mean, you probably see that a lot more. I mean, I see Hashimoto's diagnosed and I don't think it's actually real, but I think it's an easy diagnosis to make because of the way that insurance no. will actually wow. I, I i look at the other way it, they, they don't diagnose it and it is real and it's pretty much ignored 
That, um, well, that I would agree with that. I mean, for the people that don't get it, but then I see so many people that will come to me and say, I have Hashimoto's. And then I talk to them and I'm like, how do you have Hashimoto's? Well, that's what my doctor told me. Okay. Well, are you still working with that doctor? Well, no. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, but yeah, you're probably right. I mean, there's a lot of things that are. Uh, the, the, the issue, the issue is, you know, especially the endocrinologist, all they'll, all they'll tell you is that thyroid dysfunction is a, a failure of T4 to T3 conversion. That's right. But, that, that, you know, That's it doesn't right. matter. And, and Hashimoto's and Graves' disease is not that. It's an immune disease. That's right. Yep, you know? Addison, you're and, right. And they, and they yeah. tell you there's nothing you can do about it, which isn't true. So those of you who've taken my thyroid course know. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, you, you talked a little about that AMNG, but it's the same thing with like the diabetes thing. Oh, it's genetic. It runs in your family. There's nothing you can do about it. We're going to manage your diabetes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give you the ADA. Remember the ADA <laughs> diet? <laughs> 70% carbohydrate diet. That was the, that was, that was, that was what you had to do back. In unreal. The Literally unreal. Okay. Next question is what is your preferred rest time and cycles? I think you already answered that. Yeah. Eight weeks. I like eight weeks, eight weeks on eight weeks off. Um, you know, if you're a four, four to six weeks, some people will say to me like, Hey, but you know, come on, dude, I got amazing results for 12 weeks. Can I just take six weeks off? Yeah. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I mean, you know, in, in, in practice, what you get may not be the same as somebody else, but again, with peptide experiment, right. see what works. The next question I've been asking you this for two months. Does Limitless offer physician wholesale accounts? <laughs> so I didn't write is, this one. I didn't so write it, this one. So it, it, I know, but so, so they want to, so, I mean, again, right now, so, you know, the owner of Limitless just partnered with Dr. Joe's story, which I think a lot of you guys know, Dr. Joe, um, he's investing in the company and he is right now attempting to, if it's possible, you know, pre, create a firewall, if that's the best way to say it, so that, uh, the FDA is aware of what they're doing. I mean, they are definitely moving all of their sterility processing control to uh, an FDA certified and approved compliant uh, facility and all that stuff. So, so his focus right now is getting them to a place where they're obviously not considered a compound pharmacy and never will be, but they're the next best thing. And then once that happens, that is the path. Cause like, I think all of you guys are smart enough to know the FDA, and we were talking about this bill at MMG. I mean, the FDA is basically already showing their card hand. They're not laying them on the table, but they're pretty much telling you, especially with what they've done, they've gone after a lot of compounders in the last three weeks with cease and desist for selling terzapatide and semaglutide in their adulterated versions, that it's not long before you're only buying FDA approved extremely expensive peptides or you're not getting them at all from compounders. So obviously the next best thing and the only option is going to be the research chemical companies. And so then for you guys, it's buyer beware because you have to use a research chemical company that is doing third-party testing and offering COAs. And that's literally why I recommend and promote Limitless. I don't trust any of the other companies. Look, I'm very open about this. I do not trust peptide sciences. I have tested their products and they do not test out high. And I would absolutely recommend that you guys that have access to testing companies and, and the procedures to test peptide sciences and limitless, take the Pepsi ca the challenge and see what happens. And you will literally not use peptide sciences products. I mean, I have people that come to me all the time and they're saying, dude, I've been using Tessa Morellin from peptide sciences for four months and it doesn't work. And I shrug my shoulders and I say, no surprise there. You know, so you know, again, take the Pepsi challenge, you know, test the products. If you're going to use them, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. We've had that with a few of the other companies, especially with the oral, oral agents. Um, oh uh, yeah. I don't, I, it's like, there's nothing in them. Zero. <laughs> yeah. No lint, lint from the carpet. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are the triple GLP agonist actions again? And can you say that the name of it is something with an R? Can you say it slowly? Yeah, I'm going to spell it. I'll spell it right here in the, in the reply. Uh, Retta. True tide. So it's a triple agonist, you know. Um, actually, hold on one second. If I can find this link from the article that was just released about this, I think I will. Hold on. Yeah. So here it is. I got it. So investigators to share new data on retrotrutide triple therapy agonist on phase two trial results. So it's Monday. So I'm posting this right now for you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it to everyone so you have it right now. But this is the link. You can read about this. But you guys, this is the holy grail of fat loss. 
So when this product comes out, again, assuming we have access to it, and I will tell you guys this, even if they shut it down, I've already read all the clinical research. There's no reason for them to shut it down, but you guys know how they are. They could literally say, oh, well, we have to do two more years of trial. Limitless is definitely already compounding it. Well, they're not compounding, but they're manufacturing it. And so my guess is that they'll have it available for sale within the next three months. And unless on Monday they come out and they say a bunch of bad stuff, but they wouldn't be promoting this in that article if it was going to be bad. But this product is absolutely in the clinical research, side effect free, and way better than terzapatite. No lie. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I want to use it for myself. I mean, I want to see what it does, but it literally does somehow increase uh, brown adipose tissue, which, as you know, is, you know, the, the, the brown fat. Right. right. So it's enhancing, obviously, metabolic rate from that. You know how it does that. I have absolutely no fucking idea yet. I haven't seen enough of the research, but it's there. Mm -hmm. OK, um, so the next question was, is C-Max the same as semi-glutide? I, I actually answered that myself while you were talking. Um, no. <laughs> right. Yeah. C-Max is a nootropic uh, peptide and it's not a bad peptide. Um, again, if I'm ranking and I'm again, I'm, I'm not a pro nootropic dork peptide guy but if i'm ranking the nootropic peptides for sure cerebralizin is a, is the head of the class and it will help in neurodegenerative disease and disorders uh and then from a cognitive standpoint boosting i'm dihexa slank c max and then like fgl and then anything else below those hmm. so we had used uh, cerebralizin quite a bit and then uh when our, our friend the covid uh, <coughs> the police came around uh, that seemed to be when they they ripped the the uh, the uh, the cover off of it. I had actually written a, an article in a in a uh, throwaway magazine they used to have here in Reno, a, a, a supermarket magazine, because I had when it first started, I I, I researched the other um, uh, uh, you know uh, SARS uh, infections. In sure. Two thousand and two was it? There was one in two thousand and ten, and they actually used cerebralisin for um, uh, really successfully for. Um, uh, the brain fog and, 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 you know, and, uh, and all of a sudden we couldn't, all of a sudden it was no good and we couldn't get it. Um, Dude, it's, it's literally been taken off. I mean, look, man. So, you know, my business partner, Nick Andrews, 22 years in the biopharma space. Now he's just a guy making supplements because he makes a lot more money doing that. Now he, he told me that he was like, I'm telling you right now, like if you're a physician out there prescribing cerebralizin, they'll padlock your door and shut your practice now. So yeah. there's, there's something going on with cerebralizin. Like, so this is my opinion and this is just my pet theory, but I actually do think that if we, you guys meaning the, you know, the, the clinician community was allowed to play around with it and experiment with high dosages, they would find that it reverses Alzheimer's. That's my pet theory. Yeah, we, and obviously yeah. the drugs are we coming. It, you know that the drugs yeah. are coming. The drugs are coming. The drugs are coming. Yeah. We used it for, um, uh, post, uh, CVA strokes. Yep. Um, and neurodegenerative diseases and uh, yep. MS, we were doing great with it. And then now you can, we can't get it. So well, that, you know. if you could actually get Mark to admit what he knows about cerebralizin, I think you'd be blown away. He won't talk about it. He knows he can't. He, he absolutely can't. So it, again, it's, you know, and I don't care. I'm, you know, not like subject to the scrutiny you guys are, but I mean, that's my theory. Right. Because look, I know people out there right now who are high wealth individuals who are taking massive dosages of cerebralizin and cortexin and totally reversing neurodegenerative disorder. The problem is, is how do you get high dosages and how do you stay off the radar of the people monitoring the people who are taking high dosages, right? So it's not an easy game to play, but there are, you know, there are people doing it. And again, it's insane the results are getting. And so, you know, that's why they took it off the shelves and that's why they're not allowed to sell. And like I said, like you do not sell that peptide. If you're a clinician, if they find out that you're prescribing that you're done. They will I literally, I, I, I don't even know where to get it. I haven't had it for years. You can't, it. I mean, you literally can't. I mean, the Chris is selling it, you know, Chris, you guys, for you guys know, Chris Mercer is the owner of limitless and it took him two years to get it. And his manufacturer is a guy in China that manufactures most of the cerebralizin in the world. And he was like, hey, enjoy it while you have it because you ain't getting any more of it. And I'm like, Chris, do you really want to sell this? And he's like, yeah, I've already had Joe talk to the people at the FDA. Like, they're not coming after me. So I'm like, okay. 
So, I mean, like it's an insane peptide, but yeah, you cannot, in the clinical space, you're not getting it. Forget it. It's not happening. Okay. Is there yeah. other countries where you can get it, Jay? No, absolutely not. Nowhere on the entire planet. Like that is absolutely scarlet letter peptide. No, no chance. Like, I mean, like I said, they monitor that you know, for reasons un, un, unbeknownst, but like you just said, I mean, it does so many amazing things. You know, it used to be, I remember the bullshit five years ago. Oh, it's pig material or it's pig brain. It's poor scene. You know, who wants to do that? There's, you know, prions disease and all the bullshit they would give around that. And now nobody cares about that because people have seen what it's done. And so it's now it's like, oh no, you just can't use it. Terzepatite no has less side effects than semaglutide, like nausea. And I actually answered it for you, but you can, you, you can. Yeah. So look, I mean, you know, I'm very adamant about this. I've been using it for 18 months on and off. And my guys in my VIPs inner circle have been using it for six months. Mm -hmm. Not a single one of them has had side effects. Uh, and like I said, the profound aspect of this that really nobody has covered in a deep granular level yet is how it literally changes addictive impulsive compulsive behaviors it literally is doing things in my opinion to rewire the brain to get people into more of a positive mental state from a depressive mental state i mean look my sister is 44 years old and you know without sounding like an asshole she's kind of like on her way to being a cat lady or a karen or maybe a combination of both and her friends are like that. And she's had people, I mean, her friends have come to her to tell her that they're not like her anymore. And like, they're, she's like, what do you mean? And she's like, oh, I started, my doctor put me on terzapatide. Or, you know, they usually say the clinical, the Manjaro. And I don't, it's changed my life. And so my sister came to me the other day, like a week ago, and she's like, how can you get me on this? And I'm like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Because this is a, a reality shift for you. And she's like, I do, I do, I do. So, I mean, like, I know that it really is changing people's behaviors. Mm -hmm. And like, that's obviously the biggest fundamental thing you can do for someone who's never been able to control their willpower and change their dietary habits. And so I've seen no side effects. I do see side effects in semaglutide. I think you guys know that, you know, there's people out there that track resting heart rate. And they've seen like resting heart rate go up like five to 10 to 15 points when they come off of it. But I've seen nothing in terms appetite. And again, I permanent, I feel it's in my opinion, I feel it permanently is changing things at a cellular, you know, bioenergetic level. That's only positive. Again, it's only two years. We've only had it in the marketplace for like 18 months. So, I mean, you know, long-term there's nothing, but I mean, you know, there's long-term nothing. We're dying every day. We've gotten some of the, uh, uh, compounding pharmacies to make it for us. And they've added things like BPC-157 and uh, vitamin B6. And they've been recommending it in, in small doses, like two tenths of a CC, five nights a week. Um, any experience with that rather than the once a week one? Not really. Um, I mean, that's what people are doing. And I think that that's going away. I mean, I, you know, again, what I've been told from people in, you know, higher levels inside the pharma space is like, all of the compounders that are adulterating the formulation, that's like, that's like the violation of the patent. Mm -hmm. And the smart guys are going to start creating a different product. That's not an adulteration of like adding a B6 or adding a quarantine or something like that. Um, and it, you'll still get the same clinical efficacy, but you technically can say it's not an actual um, mimic of the patent. And that's what they're doing right now is they're going after. I mean, I literally just had, hold on, let me read this to you guys. I just had a doctor send this to me like four hours ago before I did it. And uh, hold on, I want to just get this for you guys. I'll, 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 share, I'll share the link uh, right here. Norvo Nordix is suing every clinic selling copycat versions of Ozempa, Ozempic and Wego. So Seema, let me send this to you guys. This is from NBC News literally today. I'm putting it in. Uh, for everybody. So this is what we have to start looking for. So you're going to get literally the big pharma branded companies selling, suing the compounders. And that's it. I mean, you know, once they get one win in class action, it's over because then they just attach every single person and say, oh, you want to sell this too? And so you know that's what's coming. And that's what I was told, by the way, Bill, when I was, when I met you, or when I, I didn't meet you, but when I saw you again at AMMG, 
the person that I was talking to there, who's very high up, high level in this said, this is how it's going to go down. And so, boom, that was sent to me today. And I was like, well, God damn it. There it is. So, so that's how, how it's going to go down. So how is like a, a company like limited was able to get like the, you know, generic. Through Zip so, and, and again, this is my theory. Um, and I, and this isn't a theory. This is the truth. So all peptides come from the same place. They all come from China. When people tell you guys that this is Chinese made and limitless, this is one of the reasons why I love limitless. Um, limitless will sell the peptide to you based on whether it was uh, compounded and formulated in China or whether it was formulated in China and compounded. And I say compounded, but I mean manufactured in the States. And so they give you a lower price. If you just get the thing that was like the whole kit and caboodle was done in China and then shipped over on a boat, um, you know, or you want to just buy the actual raw materials that is now then relabeled and life lyophilized and put into a bottle in America, that's a higher price, right? Cause in America, you pay a higher price to live in USA Inc. But the reality is, is everything comes from China. People ask me this question all the time. They're like, dude, what would you use? And I'm like, I use the cheapest version. It's all the same shit at the end of the day. You know, you're not getting a higher quality product because it was manufactured, meaning actually lyophilized and put in a vial in the States versus doing it in China. It's the same, you know, it's the same process. Oh, well, Jay in China, they have substandard working conditions and maybe there's rodent droppings. I mean, come on. It's all a lab. Yeah. I mean, literally, it's all the same lab. It's all the same sterility process and control. They can't make it in a non-place like that. So I always tell people, look, man, they're all based in China. Almost every drug in the world is made in China. All the raw materials and constituents come from China. And the scam is if they send it over and then they make it in their little USA building, they say... USA made, you know, stamp of approval, you know, in an FDA certified, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. You know, buy the cheapest version if it's the same company and the same product and use that and tell me if you yeah, don't well, notice a difference. Or, or they could even, you know, just label it. So we have, we got some tests right. from a, from a, a, a compounding pharmacy for $35 wholesale, a bottle for 500 micro milligrams or 500 milligrams, 30 of them. Right. And, and do you use it? And it was fake. It could nothing. Yeah, it didn't do anything. <laughs> right. Fire and, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As you get older in life, you start realizing you get what you pay for. <laughs> Someone asked about the price of semiglutide and terperazide. I put in there the prices that we get here in Reno for them on with a good RX, uh, 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 you know, coupon if if they'll take it. It's about thirteen hundred for semiglutide and a thousand for terzepatide. I don't know you know, what you're, what, what you. Yeah. So, I mean, look, man, like that is the good RX price. And again, that's outside the realm of affordability of the average American or Canadian. So you can get terzapatide at 10 milligram. Well, actually he doesn't have 10 milligram vials anymore from limitless five milligram vial uh, is like a hundred dollars to $125. And then if you buy them like in packs, they go down and from a discount, but I mean, you're paying literally one tenth the price. Right. That you pay for the, the, the material. And again, I will wager my life on this. There's no difference in quality. There's no difference in effect. Don't believe the bullshit. Um, but you're right, Bill. There are definitely fake versions of everything out there. I mean, I've had so many people message me in the last two months saying, you know, I switched from Limitless because my doc got me a deal at South Lake or, you know, the inverse. You know, I started using peptide sciences and I don't get the same effect. <laughs> we know that we know that so um <laughs> and and i just for you sports fans out there i i put one order in for at limitless and and i don't know what happened but um, my bank my bank did shut down my account back to you did they I got ever the account get back, back but I, I i got the account back but i never told me they never told me why and but uh, did they i mean did limitless his owner because i'm gonna yeah, have somebody somebody, somebody called me and said you know to reorder it but i, I kind of got busy and I, I didn't get around yeah to it. i mean so look I, dude I, i'm gonna I got, have i got i got i got called i got called i got told today by my my uh my my staff that we're running out of stuff so i, I better get on it <laughs> no yeah you need to call well look i'm gonna have chris what, what's your number so i can have chris call you i think you gave me your number hold on so you don't have to give it to me over everybody hold on i think i have you well I, pretty much everybody here has it anyway I all don't... right well then yeah but just let me hold on just let me see i'm pretty sure i have you 
Here it is. It's in the chat there. Yeah, I got it. It's yep. nine seven five seven zero eight eight one six eight two one, right? Right. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. So I'm gonna have Chris call you just personally and be like, "Look, okay. I'll, I'll I'll fix this." But honestly, it does happen every now and then because you know, Limitless as a research chemical company for select banks triggers as a high risk category. It's like buying CBD. Same right. shit. Mm -hmm. Um, next question. If a pet pipe stops working, can you start stop and then restart it again? And will it work again? Yes, it absolutely will. But again, you're building up antibodies in your cells to the actual peptides, uh, you know, biochemical action and bioenergetic action. So you just have to just take an equal time off. Now, as I was saying in the, in the presentation, it doesn't mean that you can't go from a nut, that peptide to a different peptide if it's working a different biological system. So again, hypothetically, if you're using a growth hormone agonist peptide targeting fat loss and you are eight weeks in and you want to stop because you want to, you know, allow the antibody to downregulate, you could go to a healing peptide and you shouldn't have, you know, you're not going to have the same effect. I mean, you know, in a perfect world, you want to take four weeks off anyway, just to allow the antibodies to downregulate. But you absolutely, depending on your level of healing or the level of healing you need or desire, you can move from a fat loss to a healing. And definitely you can work from fat loss to nootropic. Because sure. that's what people ask me all the time. And, you know, this is like a tough question to answer because I always tell people like focus on the primary modality because right. they'll be like, I want to stack, bro. You know, I want my, I want to, I want to have enhanced memory and I want to heal and I want fat loss. I'm like, okay, well, those are three separate distinct things and they're all based on your nutrition and, you know, other factors. So it's like, what is the most important thing to you? Right. You know, focus on that one thing, but you definitely can go from one to one to one, to, as long as you're just targeting different biosystems. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next little comment, it's just a little, little, little snark. Why is there a picture of GHK copper, a vial, if it's a cream? So, so, <laughs> so no, it's a, it's a very, it's a very honest and important, important question. And I can literally say that legally we sold that company. So this is actually, it, it is a 10,000 word answer in a like two sentence statement. We sold that company last year for a good amount of money and they owed us $480,000 in December for an in, a final inventory payment and they defaulted. And then we found out that this was an equity company in New York that bought our company. They were tied to FTC, that crypto bank that went down yeah. and they got looted. Yeah. So they are literally out there right now selling, meaning they're not even attached to it. They are a zombie company called Asir Custom. That was my company that we sold. And they are literally right now selling without a customer support team, a customer service team, or even a, a business infrastructure. There's nobody running the company. The, 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 the 3PL, which is the shipping and receiving and logistics company, which is Shipmunk in Pennsylvania, is taking money, illegally I may add, out of every sale <laughs> to pay for the inventory because the company is not paying their creditors or their, um, uh, you know, what do you call it? Their, um, their vendors. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a joke because my business partner has already created a new company because as soon as they didn't pay us, they violated their non-compete, um, which is a good thing for us. Him and I are not partnering right now because I'm doing too many different things, but uh, you know, I'm helping sell the product. And by the way, just for all you guys know, because you'll want this, you'll want to know this, the product, the company is called Intera, and he is selling literally right now the number one hair regrowth peptide product on the planet. It's a combination of four products. Let me put the link into the thing right now so you guys can read about what these peptides are but it's four distinct hair regrowth peptides and they are amazing i'm using this myself i have androgenic alopecia and i would legitimately be bald right now if i was not using this product i am not you know blowing smoke up your guys ass this product is amazing they literally just launched and started shipping on friday of last week so you guys will be on like the ground floor of going to get this right now and he does have now two thousand more bottles of it, or he will have 2000 bottles of this by Wednesday, what's day Tuesday by tomorrow. So you guys can order this, but let me give you the link real quick to this. Um, I've been using this product for four months and I can honestly say it is the 100% the strongest uh, product in the marketplace. Oh shit. I just, uh, I can put it in there still. Everyone put it. Can you put it in the chat there? Jay? Yeah, I just put it in there. So it's in Terra skincare, Folleton hair regrowth. Now that company will have three more products to answer the question about the bottle um a serum and a cream for the face and a beard product 
which Joel will definitely want. <laughs> no, but it's an insane beer product because it'll probably be the only one in the marketplace that's water based and not oil based. So, you know, it won't be messy. Um, and it's very strong angiogenic peptide. So, if you guys scroll down on that link I just gave you, you'll see all of the peptides. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I am their master affiliate. So, I do push their product. But I mean, I've been using the product for four months. I was the first guy to use it. Uh, and it's way better than a Sears product. And a Sears product, which was the company we sold, was patented. That's why they paid so much money for the company because that patented on that product. But now they've destroyed the company, so it doesn't have any credibility. Imagine selling a product and not having customer service. Right. So that's what these companies do. They're just they're running. They're basically just trying to run the inventory out. Just so you not know, anybody. since you since you called me out, this beard and this hair growth—it's amazing, bro. Because I've been working with Dr. Clearfield now and volunteering with him for almost eight years, and he balanced out my hormones. I've never, awesome, I, I don't have hair on my legs. I don't have hair, hair on my chest. I don't have hair, hair right here. But and you now, do have the world's best beard. No, I now have hair on my legs. I now have hair on my chest. Wow. I'm now growing hair. So that's, that's awesome, awesome, man. No, but I mean, I'm commenting your beard's awesome, dude. <laughs> Thank You're you. You're rocking it. You're welcome. Good job, Bill. You're the man. I'm just a messenger. <laughs> exactly. That's what I say, too. We got to thank you for the PDF of the book. Um, yep. And um, I, we'll be able to supply you with um, the uh, email contacts for everybody that was on tonight. Uh, when awesome. We're here. Um, yeah. And so, look, I, that's what I'm going to do for you guys. I didn't even think about this. So any of you guys. So I have a new course that I just released. It's 299 bucks. I will literally give you guys the course for 99 bucks. So. Uh, I just gave you guys my email. It's j at jcampbell.com. Just email me if you want the PDF to save you the trouble, Bill, because my team will handle this. Um, and if you want the course for 99 bucks, put that in there too, and we'll just send you guys back a coupon code. The course is unreal. It's six hours. It's absolutely intro and advanced. We go through injection procedure. I mean, we buy, we break every law known to man in, in the fucking course you know, from what we're supposed to be able to do. But I mean, the feedback that we've gotten from, we just released the course like two weeks ago is amazing. There's no question, no stone turn unturned. It's like me and a guy that I've been mentoring with peptides for seven years. Um, so I think there's a lot of really good stuff in there for you guys. So, I mean, definitely I'll give it to you guys for 99 bucks. If you guys want it to just let me know, just send it in the email. All right, there you go. Can't beat that. Mine's three ninety nine. So <laughs> I know. Yeah, we sell it for two ninety nine. We do. We sell it for two ninety nine. But I'm happy to give it to you guys for ninety nine bucks. And I promise you, it has it's all the value in the world. So just let me know if you want it, and we'll send you a coupon for it. Um, hey Jay, if I can, real quick before Doc gets into the rest of the questions, um, with the veterans in America and the first, second, third responders and the active duty military who are killing themselves. We believe at 44 veterans and military a day. What do you think would be the top thing that me or doc can do to stop this type of stuff with military first, second, third responders and veterans? I mean, dude, honestly, I mean, you guys already know the answer. It's, you know, get them, get their hormones balanced. I mean, they're all suffering from TBIs, concussive blasts, uh, the VA is an absolute fucking joke. Uh, all of these guys, and, and look, I work with so many of the special forces guys, like all the spec ops guys, you know, are in my phone. They're, you know, they're, they're always like, because I've been living in Mexico for a year and now I'm parachuting back into the States. They're <laughs> like, you know, bro, you're one of the only guys that we'll send a Chinook into Mexico for. Right, right. But it all goes to shit. But no, it's hormones. I mean, it's absolutely hormones. They have no help at the VA. Um, you know, Mark doesn't take anybody now unless you're like super special connected. You know, it's you guys now. Like, you know, it's all of us. It's you guys. We're the only ones that can help them. But it's like the problem, as you know, is that you can't do everybody for free. And so many of these guys are dependent financially on the free VA, which isn't even medical. It's not even help. It's actually like it's below help. It's not it's not even worth free. Right. Because it just fucks them up. So it's like, you know, that's the biggest problem you run into. I mean, the guys at fucking SoCal, what is it? J Joe Cal down in Tampa, you know, where all the special force operators are balanced out of, like, they're already wanting me to come in and lecture. And I'm like, look, man, like, I want to help as many of you guys as I can. And I constantly do, but like, I'm not running a charity. And it's like, every time I attempt to help you guys, it becomes like this victimhood 
like, Hey man, like, you know, we don't have the money. And I'm like, well, look, dude, I just connect you to a doctor that can help you, but they're not running a fucking charity either. And that's why Mark, you know, stopped taking patients because he just can't do it. It's just not feasible. So, I mean, it's to me, the answer has to come in the form of the VA has to fund this stuff and they have to fucking get out of the way and let people like us help these people because they can't do it. We're making a little bit of progress, right, Joe? Yes, we are. Actually, the VA here in Reno, Nevada has actually been sending uh, uh, employees and patients to Dr. Clearfield. And they've That's actually, amazing. they're accepting his labs, but they send me to a local hospital. That's so, awesome. Yeah, well, so, so we're, making, we're making a little progress. Well, so this is what I think I can do for this. And, and this is like perfect timing, divine timing. So one of the biggest guys in Joe Cal or J Cal or whatever they call it down there in Tampa, you know, where all these guys are is like a very big fan slash supporter of mine. And he's like been messaging me the last week. Cause he found out I was moving to Tampa. He's like, bro. So what we should do is you guys should email me and I should literally get a call with him. Cause I mean, I mean, and he's not a bullshitter. He's super connected at the highest levels and like, let's, you know, set up something, you know, outside of Mark's purview where we can like actually talk to them about getting this done right. Cause there's other docs, as you guys know, like will just fall in line and donate their time and services. If they know they can get some form of stipend from the goddamn federal government that has unlimited coifers. So it's just a matter of like getting it to the right people. So why don't you guys email me and I'll connect you with him. Uh, and his name, by the way, is, uh, I mean, shit, there's two of them, Kurt. And, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll email, once you guys email me, I'll email him and you guys, and we'll connect and we'll just have a call. Cause I'm telling hey, you, he's super connected. Make a note of that, Jay, Joe, Joe, we'll, I got it. I got it. we'll do I got it tomorrow it. morning. Awesome. Okay. Is the cerebral lysing dose you, you referenced 25, 20 to 50 milligrams. The slide went by fast. And is it uh, sub, sub Q, IV, or IM? Well, it's kind of mute boot point since we can't get it, but yeah, I mean, so you can definitely it's so I am for sure cerebral wise, and you know, IV for somebody who's got severe neurological damage or disorder. Uh, let me pull up the slide. See, that's the thing, is like, you know, I'm the same way. Like, if it's not, I'm not, I'm not looking at it. Um, hold on. This was on it. Um, VIP, where it is. FGL. So it's 20 to 50 stroke TBI, 20 to 50. Uh, that, so it's all 20 to 50 mLs for all, everything. And then the, the duration of treatment is uh, stroke is 10 to 21 days. TBI is seven to 30 days. So a month vascular dementia is like five days a week for uh, four weeks and then two to four months a year of four weeks. So it's like, you know, essentially a third of the year and then Alzheimer's it's five days weekly, four weeks, four cycles per year. So vascular dementia and Alzheimer's is going to be like three months out of the year. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what this means. If QI has QA, it's cheaper than Amazon Prime type price. I don't know what that means. There's there's a link in here. Something products, AIN, cell, bioregulator, pin, 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 oh, pin. oh, they're asking about bioregulator. So look, my 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 statement on bioregulators right now is the entire supply chain comes out of the Kavitsin Institute in Russia. I know you know that, Bill. Um, the Russians are flooding the market evidently. And by the way, this has never happened up until December of last year. Um, the only place you could get bioregulators internationally was with the guys in anti-aging systems, which is Phil Mikens, which you guys can watch the podcast I did with him. He's a pretty smart guy um, on talking about bioregulators. But bioregulators are bigger than peptides. I'm not exaggerating. They're a bigger frontier than peptides are. They are tissue specific. They have no side effect profiles, literally no side effect profiles. They're almost alien in their uh, mechanism of action. Um, you can give, I think I was talking to you about this bill, or maybe it was Rob. You can give a 45 to 65 year old aging male who has, you know, mild BPH, which I mean, who does it? Uh, the peptide, I mean, the uh, prostate bioregulator, and it literally will fucking reduce their prostate to like the size of what it was when they were 21. Their, B, their PSA drops. I mean, it's insane what these things are capable of doing, but right now it's impossible to get them. There's literally like seven or eight companies now selling them. They're, they're on Amazon. I think that's what that person was saying. But good luck trying to buy them. Now, I am a big affiliate for Profound Health, which is anti-aging systems website that sells the bioregulators. And I sold the living shit out of them in my first article. 
And I ordered twenty five hundred dollars worth of them for myself, and the motherfuckers never even sent them to me. They cooked my money. I had to literally like message the owner of the company and be like, "What in the hell is going on?" Yeah, I live in Mexico, but you say you ship there. What's going on? And eventually, it you know got to Phil, and Phil was like, "What is going on?" And then you find out they don't have any products. So all of the bioregulators right now are out of stock. But it seems like a lot of the companies are shady that sell them and they're taking your money and not saying anything. So I would, if I'm you and I'm buying by regulators right now, if they don't say in stock shipment available in three days, I wouldn't buy any of them because there's nobody that has them. Nobody. Sex hormone optimization in males, do you have to necessarily give testosterone? I'll let you know. No, no, I, I, I don't think you do. I mean, I mean, look, it depends on the age. It depends on the desire for fertility. I mean, you know, testosterone is the biggest tool in the tool belt. Um, I'm not a believer in peptides to optimize. I mean, Bill, I know you've seen this. I mean, HCG does what any of those fucking peptide, you know, right. uh, LH and FSH mimetics do, but the thing with peptides to stimulate that too, you got to give multiple injections. The frequency is like three or four times a day. It's all shown in the science. Who the fuck wants to do that? Right. Well, when you can give a guy HCG or, you know, and you know, two or three times a week and, you know, they don't have any of that invasive bullshit that they have to do with peptides. But I mean, yeah. there is, in my opinion, and it's my opinion. I, I mean, that you get to a certain point in your life at your age, if you truly want the profound dopamine cognitive, energy libido and obviously muscle building effects of testosterone you got to use the mother hormone right. but younger guys younger people can absolutely attempt to do the memetics and see what happens i mean i don't find many people who feel the tr the free testosterone stimulation or increase that you know obviously therapeutic teed gives you know versus in clomiphene or hcg or one of the peptides like trip dub rep or hexa or what's the other one now that people use um not Tessa's kiss, 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 Peptin. Peptin, right? Yeah, I, I don't see any of that. So, I mean, to me, you don't really feel testosterone optimization until free is elevated. I mean, you even said it best in your lecture. You know, if you put a gun to a clinician who understands how to do this, his head 40 is the level in men right. where they actually feel well, better. Well, yeah, you know, that, that guy that just, you know, runs testosterone levels in, in women is just, you know, I thought a guy was just out of his or guys was, was out of his mind. His testosterone level was 2000. His estrogen was 175. And he's, yep. you know, he's standing up there proud of it, but that's a whole nother story. So one of the, one, one of the abstracts I sent for um, AMMG for Houston was um, uh, non-hormonal, uh, uh, non-hormonal ways to, to raise uh, hormone levels. So for testosterone, I have 18 different ways to raise testosterone without, awesome. using, without using testosterone and not, I didn't even mention clomiphene or DHEA or, you know, any of those things. So. What were they? If you don't mind me asking, is it uh, my well, lifestyle modulation? Well, most, most, yeah. Well, the first top three are, um, let me see what I'm First, well, number one is exercise, you know, aerobic exercise. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and um, high, high protein, um, uh, uh, high, yeah. high protein, moderate fat diet yep. was two. Yep. Um, uh, Sun gazing said, in yeah. the morning at red light. Mm -hmm. Fasting. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, fasting is another one, but things like boron will lower sex hormone binding globulin, yep, which is more too. free testosterone. Yep. Uh, Mac Macuna prurians is another one. Yep. Um, ashwagandha, if you use it at a high enough dose, three yep. grams twice too. a day. Suppresses cortisol so much. Shilajit is another, um, uh, that's another um, Ayurvedic herb. Yep. Um, and um, uh, I know there's a whole bunch of other ones. There. Yeah, there is. Even Just berberines in there. Just so, don't so, use, don't say turkesterone, bro. No, don't, have, <laughs> don't have that one. Um, <laughs> will, will, will BPC injections help with Crohn's disease and, and GI issues or stick with the oral? No, oral. I mean, look, metformin is going to help with Crohn's disease and uh, Crohn's disease and GI issues more than any of the oral peptides world. And again, that's because metformin increases acromancia uh, mucinous. It upregulates that better than anything that we know on planet earth. I'm telling you, if you guys have patients that have autoimmune disorders, start them at 250 milligrams XR metformin and watch what happens. They might not even have to change anything else. It crushes systemic inflammation and, cr and cleanses the microbiome. And again, so many people miss this. Um, you know, I have a famous quote in my book and also in the article. And again, this is a very famous doctor that all of you guys know who refuses to be named. And he told me 
in 2014 that if metformin was in the water supply, there would not be hospitals in the United States. Hmm. That's what he told me. And I have been on metformin for 19 years. Uh, I have a biological age, according to true diagnostic and glycan age of less than 24 and I'm 52. Okay. I know that metformin does profound things to extend lifespan. Now, you know, there are obviously certain things that we can see, you know, in, in some of the versions that are made where they get recalled and all this bullshit and they say it has nicotine and all this other bullshit in it. But when you really start breaking down and look at the studies, there isn't a high enough level of any of those things to actually be carcinogenic or to cause side effects. You know, you'll see shit about birth control or it causes fertility issues. I mean, I've heard it all and I've seen it all, but I don't know anything stronger um, than metformin. And you said it best, uh, dihydroberberin with metformin is now all the rage in the life extension community because dihydroberberin is a glucose disposal agent uh, more profound than metformin is, right? Metformin is suppressing blood glucose and dihydroberberin is getting rid of the glucose itself. Right. So, you know, in combination, they probably are better, but I mean, you know, is it kind of like, you know, you're, at, you're, you're using two hammers at once when all you need is one hammer. I don't know. I mean, it depends on your lifestyle, but they're both amazing one, products and one, that's going to work better than peptides. One, one caveat with the metformin though. So, you know, you know, we're the hormone folks here. So we see a lot of, you know, uh, younger women with polycystic ovaries. And the first thing they say to me when they sit down is if you, if you give me metformin, I'm, I'm walking out. So for whatever reason, they it 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 it, it does something to to to, to their chemistry. But but, the but see, I would say when I hear that because I've heard that too, I would say that these are people that have shitty diets, that um, they have in, non-insulin controlled diets. Mm -hmm. um, okay, why not hormones that stimulate the testes? That that was a question. Uh, when they say hormones that stimulate the testes, they're talking about FSH and LH analogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I think they're fine in younger people, but when you, again, in theory, the theory does not match the practice. When you start using those in, if you took a hundred random guys and you gave them that uh, in isolation, would they have the same dopamine and signaling, uh, you know, cognitive, energetic, uh, you know, free testosterone raising effect that therapeutic tea does? No. And, and I, again, I've talked to thousands of these guys over the last 20 years and all of them to a man, there's some exceptions, but they're outliers. They say they feel better, whether it's placebo or not, when they're on testosterone versus LH. And again, if you look at, you know, when I say LH, I mean, FS, I mean, uh, I, you know, an FSH mimetic or LH mimetic, but it's, again, these are women's fertility medications. So they do increase estradiol and they also do a bunch of other things that increase the feelings of emotion, you know, let's call it emotionality. So mm -hmm. a lot of those guys don't feel as quote unquote masculine as they do when they're on testosterone. Right. Uh, when do you believe the FDA will implement their takeover of peptides and should we stock up? <laughs> yes. I, I 100% I would stock up. I was told that by the end of the year. And again, that article that I just sent you, the writing is on the wall, guys. It's not long. I mean, they, they envision a world where you pay the piper. There is no end arounds. Now, how does that relate to the research chemical companies? Well, I don't know. I mean, if you talk to jo Dr. Joe Story, who's super connected to the FDA, he's going to tell you it doesn't relate to them because in the purview of the FDA, everything is legal. And as you guys know, when you buy from a research chemical company, you absolutely indemnify them from harm. Because you basically are agreeing to use for research purposes or for not intended for human use. So you, they are not legally able to go after them because you are giving up your right. Whereas with a compounder, you know, they're a medically licensed and authorized and overseen company. And so they can go after them. So what I understand and what I've been told is the research chemical companies, they don't really give a shit. Now, obviously, if a research chemical company kills somebody, and good luck trying to prove that in a court of law, then it's a you know d different story, buyer beware. But at the end of the day, I don't see them going after the research chemical companies because legally they don't have a stand, a, 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 any ground to stand on. Now, granted, you could tell me that eventually Nazi Germany is the USA <laughs> and it won't matter 
But for right now, it, it just doesn't look like they go after them. And, and they have shut down research chemical companies in the last 10 years. I mean, you know, anybody in that business knows the guys that have been singled out, but they were literally running gangster businesses. They were not running a business like Peptide Sciences or Limitless is doing, you know, and Limitless has literally hundreds of thousands of patients, you know, who are coming in for legitimate medical you know, reasons using their products and have, you know, rave reviews and, you know, honest feedback from people. So, I mean, like, why would the FDA slash the DEA go after them unless we were going into an Orwellian, you know, Nazi Germany world? And, you know, I'm sure you could make that argument that that might be coming. If I may follow up on that, Doc, um, do you know about Dr. Pam Popper? She's created Make America Great Again. It's a entity with a bunch of lawyers who's protecting doctors like you who are speaking out. Yeah. Not about that. Very familiar. I'm very familiar with Pam. Okay. Okay. Cause that's, I think that's the next level we have to go because yeah, Dr. I mean, Clearfield, absolutely. If you know about Dr. Clearfield, he went through this with the AOA. They yep. censored him. Yeah. Okay. It's, yep. it's, it's, and as a Marine, I'll be honest, last, last night, Dr. Halas's class, we were talking about AI and I envision DARPA and I envision the Marines yep. talking to AI saying, hey, look, how do we keep America safe? How do yeah. we do this? How do we make sure we don't let AI take us over? That's the way right. I see DARPA and the Marines talking to AI. I don't know if you want to, you know, speak on that. No, I mean, like, I mean, look, man, I'm, you know, not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy analyst. Amen. So, you know, and as you guys know, like conspiracy theory now is really just three months separation from analysis, analysis and conspiracy theory. So it's like the reality is, is like we're going into uncharted waters right now on planet Earth. Right. Uh, I don't trust anyone in any kind of control. I mean, we've all seen what's happened in the last three years. I mean, there is no government at this point. I mean, like the government has been hijacked or corrupted or whatever the fuck you want. And I don't care what side of the you know, political equation you're on. I mean, I always say like at the end of the day, like there is no sides. It just make us think that there are sides, right? There's only special interests. There's nothing but special interests in corporate control and, you know, money machines at the top. But like, I mean, dude, I don't know. We're definitely going into uncharted waters, but I always say where there's a will, there's a way. And if there's a demand, there will be a supply. So if they shut down compounders and they shut down research chemical companies, then somebody will meet the demand. It's just the way of the marketplace. Now, again, I don't know if, you know, what's his name? Claude Schwab. If he says, you know, let them eat bugs, they'll be, they'll, they'll have nothing and be happy. I mean, if they eventually institute that in America, then we'll have civil war. There's too many guns in the United States. There's too many you know, yeah. active and ex-military. There's too many crazy people like us that have lots of guns and ammunition. So what are they going to do, right? But if that's where it goes, then, you know, my answer would be like, you know, all bets are off. Be optimizedly uh, on your hormones, right? Be you got to be, more. exactly. And, and that's, ex whoever said like, should we stock up? You should always fucking be stocked up. You know, be ready, right? What is it? Know thyself and that Boy Scout motto, you know, always be ready. I mean, like you, you gotta be, I mean, there's no reason not to be, I mean, we don't know what's coming next, but I mean, it's a fucking weird world we're living in right now. Amen. Cerebral license for PTSD. We're almost Absolutely. done. Absolutely. Absolutely. PTSD. Amazing. Um, that other one is PE 22. Um, that's another peptide that's really good for depression. You know, obviously most people with PTSD have depression. So that's also a really good one. I, and again, and again, I haven't used it personally, but my, the feedback that I get, if you have people that are on benzodiapines or addicted to them, that's what you use PE 22. Um, does, uh, metformin affect B12? So yes, always a rule of thumb when you use metformin, it hyper excretes folate, thymine, methionine or methionine however you fucking pronounce that and b6 uh b12 so, so the solution for metformin and i've always been very outspoken about this is you use jaro's b right supplement when you take metformin and you have to take that at all times when you're using metformin and that will you know essentially alleviate look the mitochondrial dysfunction and dysregulation bullshit that's out there from Dave Asprey. And then there was a doctor, what's her name? Chandler Mars, you know, in Vegas, if you might know her, um, 
William. He's, she's actually a friend of mine now. Cause I challenged her. I was at A4M and, you know, I was like, look, I'm here. You're here. Let's go have a open debate about this because you're the person that talked about mitochondrial dysfunction in women. I mean, not in women in patients using metformin. And so we sat down and we talked about the research that she used and it was like, here's the research. 137 women who were type two diabetics and morbidly obese. I shit you not. And here's the amount of metformin they were using in the dosage. And are you guys ready for this? They were using 10 grams a day, 10 grams a day. So I literally was like, Dr. Mars, will you admit that this is not otherwise normal, healthy patients? And she said, I will admit that. And I said, well, why did you do what you did? And she goes, yeah, you know, maybe I'd cut a couple of corners. So she was like, openly and honest with me. And I'm like, okay, well, Dave Asprey and Peter Atia and all these guys went to the market and said that this is what it does. And it's bullshit. So she's like, well, you know, you're probably right. But at this point, the cat's out of the bag. I'm like, you should fucking recant. You know, I'll publish the article on my website. She wouldn't do it. But she openly admitted that she misinterpreted the research. So I mean, there's nothing out there about metformin that says it's bad. It's all bullshit. There's nothing. It should be first line of defense for life extension if that's what your goal is. Uh, one another comment. Uh, some people are sensitive to metformin; they get diarrhea. Okay, so this is absolutely very known. So metformin in upregulating acromancia is going to cause, you know, distension, abdominal distension, not nausea, but just a feeling of discomfort until it kills all the pathogens in the stomach. And so it's going to be, you know, in a person who has severe dysbiosis, five to seven days before they start noticing uh, an improvement. Um, but again, that is, that's when, you know, it's working and, 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 and obviously there is a workaround with this and that is using XR extended release version. Most people do not get that effect using XR. Okay. That's, that's anybody else have any comments or questions? I think we've uh, occupied you for two and a half hours. You've been talking and, uh, I it appreciate like it. You could do another two and a half. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll let you go. I haven't eaten. I'm fasting right now. So, like, you know, I'm about to break my fast. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I mean, honestly, guys, amazing. I appreciate you guys being here. You have no, my email you. address. If you need yeah. to get a hold of me, um, yeah, jump in and so email me. We'll get the we'll get the video on uh, on our website as soon as we can. Is it awesome. possible that I, I can get the slides that I can put up there too? Yeah, absolutely. I'll send you I'll send you a link to the slide deck. Yep. And um. And we'll get you the um, we'll get you the um, the contact list too. Uh, you know, okay, yeah. awesome guys. Yeah, no, I'll definitely. And so I'll send an email. I'll have my team create an email, and I'll send out the the link to the uh, the coupon. We'll create a coupon for you guys, right. and then of course I'll send a PDF yeah. of the book in yeah. the in the email. And, and we will definitely have you on again for the uh, bio bio regulators. The yeah, bio for sure. Yeah, I look forward to that. And honestly, um, it's better that I do it later anyway because we're writing a bunch of articles right now, and there'll be a lot more stuff out. But uh, Man, I can't wait. So I will just share with you guys, like my goal is to have a bioregulator company to be the biggest and best in the West, because right now, like I said, it's absolute shady. It's like the wild, wild West. Um, and that company is coming. It's in the works. It's just right now about establishing the right supply chain. You basically just have to buy from the Russians in volumes of a million. And nobody's buying in volumes of a million. They're buying in like 200,000 increments or 150,000 increments. And they're like, nah. There's no incentive for us. Give us an incentive. So we found out it's a million. So we're like, okay, well, I got to get the, I got to get the venture capital guys in. I got to get the right guys because I don't need people going bad. So hopefully, you know, that's coming. But I'm telling you, when bioregulators are in the West, it will change the game for optimized healthcare without question. You know, in, in combination with peptides, they even are work better. You just have to know how to do it. Okay. Got a lot of comments about you know great job and 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 you know you know how much we all appreciate it. What, one last question though is what what's behind you? Is that a green screen or or no uh, no? So this is my wall. So I do a lot of um, you know spiritual uh, content and you know I have Yoda behind here and then I have like the shaman from the um, the uh, Atiplano in Peru. So these are actually oil paintings. That. Mm -hmm. This is from Peru, and then this one is actually from uh, the Yucatan, where I live down here in Mexico. But uh, you know, I just spiritual, mm -hmm. spiritual. What's, what's the color? What's the color? What's the color chart over your right shoulder there? Oh, so this is um, Dr. Hawkins' map of consciousness. Oh, okay, 
And the other two over there, I, I, we can see about half of it on, on your. These two right here? Yeah. Yeah, these are just uh, oil paintings of like uh, shamans from mm -hmm. Peru. Okay. All right. Great. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Um, Jay, yeah. I can't thank one, you. One more. One more. Yeah, Real for sure. I think Clyde has a question. One more on uh, psychedelics. Let's say yep. we go through the whole thing. We go through the whole hormone. We go through the whole everything. I've been working with Dr. Clearfield for eight years. A lot of trauma in my youth. A lot of trauma in the Marine Corps. Blah, blah, blah. Psychedelics seem to be like powerful and useful. When do you think you use them or what's your experience with them? Yeah, I mean, I have, I have profound experience with them, obviously. Uh, I'm a huge plant medicine guy. I'm actually a 5-MEO guy. Uh, I always tell people like, why fuck around when you can go to the mothership in five seconds, right? So like, you know, all the other things are great, but like, if you really want to get into the source field, use 5-MEO. So I have an article about 5-MEO that I would recommend you guys read. It's sourced at Arrowhead. Uh, I'll send it to you. So when I send the email out, I'll send the link to that too. But um, thank you. Nobody, and this is my opinion, but obviously a very expansive user, 20 years plus of using these things. No one should ever take any plant medicine who's afraid. Because the plant is a vibratory amplifier. And so if you're vibrating in fear, dissonance, you know, incoherence, you're going to get that from the plant. Now, that's not saying that that won't be a decent and relevant experience for your journey. But a lot of people who are in fear of it get profoundly negatively altered from this. Like I know people who have done plant medicine journeys who have never recovered. Now you won't ever hear people who sell the experience of plant medicines and going to the jungle and doing shamanic journeys. But the truth is, is that if you're not of the right frequency, and again, not of the right frequency means you're in fear of it. You're asking for trouble, not to say it won't benefit your energy field to do it, but you're asking for trouble. So if you're going to do something like that, you go in with the knowledge that the plant or the toad, if you're using 5-MeO DMT, is going to give you exactly what is necessary for your soul to evolve, not what you want. And too many people want specific outcomes, and that's not how it works. So if you just go in fully surrendered with the idea that like, hey, man, this is like an amazing journey. Enjoy, I'm going to enjoy the ride. Give it to me, source. Give it to me, God. Give it to me, spirit. Great, you know, great spirit you're going to get an amazing experience, but too many people are afraid of it. I've seen it too many times. John, you got any, any comments for us? Uh, set and setting. Same set thing. And setting, bro. Set and setting. You just nailed it. Set and so, setting. You've hit a bunch of, you've hit a bunch of things real heavy and home to our hearts. It's mine also. And between you and Bill, we could put on a show on the East Coast. So I'll tell you now, I was going to ask you to what you think about it, because you're saying profound, brave things. So we need to respect and honor that bravery. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hey, thank I you. have a question. You have the second bus beard. Clyde, do you have, you have something to add? Yeah. I do have a question. Uh, I started studying pretty heavy into the peptides about four or five months ago. And when I came across YouTube, I saw that uh, graph from David Hawkins, Power versus Force behind you. That's right. Which made me pretty curious. I dug in. Uh, I've been testing muscles for 45 years now. That's awesome, man. And it's a, it's a very powerful tool. And when I started into Hawkins work in the mid 90s, I was able to add not just qualification, but quantification to the right. effects of these things. That's right. We can literally utilize muscle response tests to assess not just the quantity, but the quality of effect of anything in the body and going in the body. That's and exactly right. That now, it's really a powerful tool for just assessing the quality of the nutrient as it comes off the shelf. I wonder if you are doing something like that. I know I saw you talking to Dr. That guy from Texas, the chiropractor is running all that frequency treatment. Yep. yep. Are you all doing anything that incorporating that in your manufacturers or your studies? Uh, so... I love you, man. Like, so you're asking me questions right now that I really technically right now, because of the bullshit, you know, in the world, like I can't honestly say from a standpoint of like, let me just say yes. <laughs> but I can't, I can't go into the details. Um, so I actually, so I'm a huge, obviously uh, applied kinesiology guy too. Uh, I've actually kind of like personally expanded in my opinion beyond that, in that I actually have ways to ask my higher self 
uh, an answer. The question is this, you know, in my highest and best interest to quote yeah. unquote, use this, right. You, you understand this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, I, yeah. and I've now like bioenergetically, you know, I get hair stand up on my right arm or I get hairs like peeled down on yeah. my left side of my neck. So those uh, are the two places that I assess. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically that is the next frontier of, you know, a, a supplement creation, bioregulator creation, because you're basically connecting the divine to the formulation of it. Um, but you got to be also careful of like the manufacturing process and the raw materials. Cause as you know, like, see the problem with the supplement industry and I've, you know, been outspoken about this cause I've been in many supplement, I've been bought out by companies and bought out by my, my partners. Um, it's very difficult to trust the manufacturers of supplements because they can give you a 99.9% .9 efficacy batch. And then the next time, if you don't test, you don't know what you're getting. Yes. So how can you be, you know, honest, transparent, authentic to the marketplace if you truly can't vouch for the viability and the efficacy of the product? So I'm not really, I haven't been really big into the supplement space once I figured out that there was like a massive spiritual disconnect um, in doing that. But with bioregulators, you, you nailed it because, you know, you're talking about now a totally different, you're essentially talking about a drug that is considered a supplement by grass, by the regulations, but it's still tissue specific and side effect free. So if you can actually now, you know, bioenergetically create that, you know, talk about like basically, you know, give a spiritual governance to it, you know, through applied kinesiology or through, you know, higher, let's call it higher torsion physics, um, you're giving it even that much more. You're basically energizing it even more. Good, good, good. I got it. I'm glad you're at that. Thank you. And thanks you're for welcome. this presentation. You. Yeah, you're absolutely welcome. Thank you for watching it. Thank you. One more Thank you. quick question, Doc. Uh, Shell Stein has a question on B12. Does metformin affect B12 or methylfolate? Yeah, yeah. So, so, all, so basically all the B vitamins and the cofactors, again, folate and the theanine. Um, so in women, it definitely uh, can also, you know, drop uh, what is it? Um, not iron, but uh, ferritin. So, so just, so again, you have to take a very profound B multi-spectrum. And again, for me, the best one out there is Jaro. It's not expensive and it's a high quality, you know, I've tested it independently myself and it's, it's got all the cofactors and all the B vitamins that you need. And that's really all you need to do. And, you know, the clinical research shows that metformin at 1850 milligrams a day is kind of like the net saturation in the tissue. I take two, I take two grams. I take a gram bid and my wife takes 250 uh, AM and PM. But like, you know, if you're, you know, a six foot guy or five ten guy and you're 180 pounds or higher, there's no reason you can't take two, but titrate start lower and titrate up. I think most guys can start at 500 and 500 and women can start at 250, 250, but that's, that's my recommendation. I don't know what that is. Somebody's off mute. I'll take it. Uh, the only ones I have is you, me, and and. All right. I could have been the CIA. They were listening, bro. And they to mute um, everybody too. And I don't know who it is. I think it's yeah. I, I don't have anybody on except you, me, and uh, they're probably listening. I mean, that happens all the time. They listen to everything. You know that. There's it's an active yeah. calm. Joel yeah. knows it's an yeah, active calm that. at all points and times. Yeah, we know that. So <laughs> yeah, what was the name of the PTSD peptide? Uh, the PTSD peptide is PE twenty two. Or, I mean, again, any of the stronger ones, cerebralizin and cortexin. Now, cortexin is not in my book, and that's kind of like a tragic oversight. But when we wrote the book in January and published it in February 1st, there was no way to get cortexin. And again, it's more of a bioregulator than it is a peptide, but there are research companies out there selling it as an injectable peptide, and it definitely works just as good. And according, and this is kind of hot off the presses, according to my you know, business partner who I would consider like one of the top three experts in the world on bioregulators and um, peptides, Nick Andrews, he says that injectable bioregulators are out of this world. So, so check this out. There's an injectable bioregulator that regenerates heart tissue. I swear to God. 
So, I mean, you want to talk about putting the cardiologist out of business and taking stents and saying that ain't happening anymore. <laughs> you, you, you inject these bioregulators like literally right into the heart and you completely regenerate a dead heart or a broken heart or a vascularly diseased heart. It's insane. So you mean you can do same thing for the kidneys? Uh, every, every, so, so, so theoretically, and again, you know, the rot, if you could read Russian research, you would prove this because they've got 50 years of research with this, but theoretically every single organ system, there is a bioregulator for it. And it absolutely will regenerate the organ system. Now, you know, what levels of decay, will it get it back to healthy or normal? I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking that's going to be on an individual end user. And obviously there are certain levels of no return, but for an average aging, normal person who has, you know, a defective kidney, uh, a large prostate, which is all of us, fuck, right? Like how many of us right now would literally love to go and sleep an entire night without having to wake up and take a piss? <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, there's not many of us. So, but like in the people that I've spoken to, 10 day course of this prostate bioregulator, and I think it's called testolutin. Don't hold me to that. I don't know the names of them like I should yet, but um, this guy is a 63 year old guy and him and I have been, I've been consulting with him for like seven years. He's a lawyer and he's had a, you know, a PSA of like 3.8 you know, forever. He has no cancer or nothing, but he's just had a swollen prostate. He's not, he's actually a pretty healthy guy. He started the bioregulator and he took it. It's 10 day. It's a 10 day window in a 30 day cycle. And then you take 30 days off and then you do 10 day again at day 80, his PSA went down to 0.6. And he literally says that he literally goes and sleeps his entire night. Now, 62 years old. It's insane. Now there are thousands of people in Russia who've been using these things who swear who get the exact same results. This guy's an American guy. He bought these things in February before they ran out of stock. And he sends me messages and I'm just like, fuck dude, it's, it's insane. Would you, are you willing to go on the record on this? He goes, absolutely. So, I mean, like imagine what they're capable of doing for again, all the various organ systems. And again, they're tissue specific and they're orally dosed. And again, we know that injectable is probably even stronger, but the orals work just as well as the injectables for what we, from what we understand. So, I mean, you guys can see, you know, obviously the, 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 uh, the permutations of this, you know, at a meta level is just, it, it's, it's beyond a really understanding. I mean, it will obviously change medicine in ways that we can't really comprehend. So oh, I think that, in your experience, how long does it take cerebralizing to work that the, you notice the significant improvement? I, I mean, again, it depends on the stage, you know, of the disorder or the disease, but, you know, there are definitely people that see, see improvement within 90 days. I mean, again, it really depends on the level, uh, you know, an advanced, an end stage Alzheimer's patient, probably you can't, I mean, are you going to see anything? But if you get it in early stages, you can definitely get people to remember who their kids were um, when they're, you know, not able to otherwise. Yeah, we had a study where uh, I don't remember what the dose was, but the um, the recovery time at post CVA uh, using cerebral lysin, uh at 21 days was um, the equivalent of someone who was not, had not used anything at hundred. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's unreal. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's, they, they block it for a reason. They really do. All right, Jay, I think we're going to let you go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you guys, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so um, much. Yeah, uh, no, it was amazing. Thank you, Bill. Hey, I mean, I appreciate you, you guys too. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we definitely want to have you back. Um, uh, oh, by the way, just real quick. So uh, next week, we're going to have Dr. Uh, Tano uh, back with us again. Uh, he does the integrative immun immunology, and he does a really nice job of that. And um, we're we're talking with him about, he's got a three-day uh, in-house in course, in-person course and a six week um, online course. And we're uh, talk, trying to coordinate with him and to, to you know, bring it to our, our group for um, a reasonable, reasonable uh, cost. Awesome. And, and, and so um, we'll, we'll hear about that next week. Um, and uh, Jay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch uh, for lots for of sure, reasons. <laughs> yeah, awesome. lots of yeah reasons. for sure, for and, sure. Um, um, if we ever do a live one again, we wanna have you with us, so. Um, okay. Awesome. Yeah. I'd love, I'd love great. to be there. And, uh, you know, this is the beginning as I like to say of the golden age 
but mm-hmm. you know, it's where we place our consciousness right now. Right. So place our consciousness on uh, resonance and improving this planet and let the fucking demons do what they're going to do. And they can have their own timeline and we'll have our timeline, but our timeline is healing the planet. Simple. Right. Okay. Amen. All right. What do you have to say to that, John? He's there, man. On target. Yeah. Okay. And All right, you're everybody. You're um, right. I'll get, I'll get this up as soon as I can. Um, it's, it's a pretty long one. So we may, may have a little bit of a delay. Usually I get them, get them up within 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer, but we'll have it up within 48 hours on, on our website. And uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll twist Jay's arm to get the slides and um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you, we'll get you the, uh, the contact info, Jay. Okay. Awesome, man. I appreciate all right, you guys all great. John, reach out to me, bro. We don't, let's okay. talk. Okay. All right, guys. Have an Thank amazing night. Okay. Good night. Care, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.